That's a hot take. Swing it around American flag because oh, yeah. that's what America's supposed to be. It's supposed to look like terminally chill. The yeah. insurance commercial has a fat ass but like no personality. Yeah, I feel like sitting here and listening to this. <laughs> no, god damn it. Isaac, New Noise is not the first fucking refused album. Oh, Rip no, Isaac a new one today. Do you know what I mean? Like. Don't touch my records. Ever. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Hot Takes. Please, Hi guys. Please let me know if uh, you can hear us all right. Thumbs up or thumbs down. If anything's too loud or too quiet, please advise. Uh, let's let's mute that intro music. Whoops. Um, I'm Young Shiro, and this is Yellowton Lipstick. How are you guys? Lovely to see you. Lovely and this is Hot here. Takes. Of course, it's every two weeks. Of course, it's full of arguments, debates, discussion, geek out sessions, and all kinds of spicy mm -hmm. opinions it takes. There is no such thing as a bad opinion on hot takes. As long as nobody's feelings all are hurt, right? Welcome. All yeah, opinions, all are opinions are welcome. welcome. Yeah, um, we want to discuss fun things. Life, music, art, all the good stuff, where it all comes from. Absolutely. Hot takes is a very interactive experience. For those of you that are new, please be... Uh, please feel free to sound off in the chat if you have questions. We try to answer everyone's questions. Uh, if you have comments, if you have opinions, by no means, don't hold back. Go right ahead and put them in the chat. Um, do you want to tell them a little bit about uh, what Hot Takes is? I mean, I, I guess I gave a little bit of an intro. You just did all right, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. That'll do for now. Um, <laughs> I think that's good. We got a very special... Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Tech Honors should be uh, should be rating us very soon. But thank you guys for uh, for being early birds. Uh, we got a very special guest today, an OG from the instrumental hip hop scene from the late 2000s, early yes. 2010s, a Mr. Chlorine Absolutely. Mist. Uh, I'll, uh, if you're not familiar with Chlorine Mist and the previous project, uh, Friend Zone, I highly recommend you do because it's fantastic, it's fantastic stuff. Just very evocative music. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll go a little bit more into that later. Um, but I want to, if it's okay, Chris, I want to start off with a little gripe that I have. Guess you could call it a hot wow. take. Wow. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, guy. One hundred percent electronica. Thank you, guys. Uh, good to see you guys Absolutely. rating us. We're you, you're right here in time for the hot take. The homies. All right. Thanks, hundred P. Thanks, Tech. I hope you got to see that cool little intro screen I made for him. Um, mm -hmm. Already got a super fan in the chat. Yes. Uh, okay. So you're an artist, so I'm sure you'll have uh, some some banter on this. But nothing bothers me more, bro, than when people take their music off the internet. Mm. I understand that artists reserve the, the right to control their, their intellectual property, but you have no mm -hmm. idea how many times somebody has made an absolute banger. I want to show it to somebody. I want to download it. I want to uh -huh. buy it. There's no download yeah. button. There's no purchase button. I would gladly give this artist my money and there's no way to do it. And then it disappears from the internet forever. Why do you guys do that? So many vaporwave yeah. artists have just rage quit the internet, and then somebody will yeah, like right. upload all of their shit, like on a fan SoundCloud or a fan Bandcamp. Uh, contact lens comes to mind. Uh, a handful of wow, other so artists. Please tell well, me I'm not SR alone. No, no, no. So SR, <coughs> SR Volva, uh, there are so many things like. Oh yeah, that's a great remix. He's talking about uh, fucking. Um, talking about the you know our buddy our, our guest tonight and oh my god i do love that meshy smiles uh meshy smiles cool uh, chopped and screwed remix that's a fucking amazing but anyway back to what you were saying yeah so there's oh, uh, yeah. what comes to mind for me is there was this really fantastic um uh, gr uh producer of the state that put out this wonderful ep that it's like one of my favorites uh, i i had songs like nuclear city on it and in the red okay. in the red you can still look up the music video for that that's like one of my favorite songs you're gonna have to uh, link that because i've not heard that i'll link it later yeah but please. you know i wonder you know it's 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 so funny when things get removed from the internet because you're you just you know you assume the internet means that things are going to be always there but it's really not and it reminds me of a thing that uh John Zobelli, like Christ said one time in an interview, which is that, you know, we can take for granted the fact that the internet is this thing mm -hmm. that uh, is an eternal, like, it, it is, is like an eternal thing, but it's yeah. not, right? It's yeah. it's so easy to lose things off of it. You know, things are Absolutely. there and they're gone. So, like, you know, John has, like, hard drives, 
backed up with all these things on it that Good. may no longer be that are no longer on the internet because you never know what's going to move somebody. Mm -mm. You never know what's going to strike somebody, and then it's taken away and it's gone forever. And I don't, I don't know. You know who? Yeah, I see Lux saying same. Yeah, I Lux gotta has, assume that Lux is a got god a hard lot drive. of shit archived. I gotta assume that Lux has got a whole bunch of stuff archived. Oh, yeah. right. That is, you know, she's probably one of the best uh, people who does that. But, you know, you have to have, if you find stuff that you really love, my massive is, my archive is massive. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But when, you know, that's the thing is like, it reminds me sometimes when I find something that moves me, I have to like save that. I have to put that onto the hard Absolutely drive. Absolutely same. Have to remember my, uh, you know, move it. But I don't know. I'm not sure why. What's up, Bakari? What's up, Yeah, Bakari's here. Yes. A couple more but, super you know fans what, are here. I guess at the end of the, you know, because there's like this debate, right, about when you make art and you put it out there, does it belong to the artist anymore, or exactly. does it not belong to the public, right? Exactly. I mean, isn't that isn't that the isn't that the big eternal debate like all the time, right? When we make art and we put it out there, are we allowed to take it back just because we made it, or is it now there and does it belong to everybody? Because at the end of the day. Yeah, I might be the artist that makes something. I might be the person who produces it, but I don't know. Does it belong to me anymore? Am I just a vessel for the art? Right. Like, for example, like I have, I've put out some skeleton lipstick stuff, and there's some stuff I put out that I don't really like that much anymore. There's gotcha. some songs I have out that I'm not really the biggest fan of anymore, and it's very few and far between because I try to make sure everything I release is something that I enjoy too. But once in a while, like there's a song that I'm like, man, I wish I produced that differently. Gotcha. But, you know, I leave it on I leave it on my Bandcamp because I put it out there. Yeah, um, that's what I was gonna ask sometimes you. Sometimes, sometimes I have, and so, I used to have all my music on Spotify, but I actually did take down some of it because I don't know, some of it I felt like didn't represent me quite as well. Gotcha. And I'm not gonna lie, I got I, when I did that and I removed like some of my older EPs, like I did get like messages from people be like, hey, right? what, what happened to the song? Like, and I yeah. never would have thought that people would connect with certain songs. I was like, well, I never even think that. I didn't know people liked it, but man, one that's why man's I trash on is another man's potpourri, bro. I'm not going to call my music trash. Well, me neither, but, but it's the truism. I'm just fucking around. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad you left anyhow, it out. But I did leave it up on Bandcamp, so I left up everything on Bandcamp. But like so maybe on Spotify, some other streaming services I've curated. But so I think that's like a happy medium. Like you can pick like a, a platform and then that could be like where everything goes. Right. And then maybe something that's a little bit more curated can be on another platform. But you know, I yeah, don't know yeah, good if point. you made it. You know, we talked to Uniwa about this too, right? He had mentioned that he like looks at some of his other his older songs and he's like mm, once in a yeah, while, but then he's true. like, yeah, you know what? But then he also said after that, but it's like, but you know what? Then he looks at it again. And he's like, you know what? It's pretty dope, and I did what I could at the time, yeah. and you know, he leaves it up there. So yeah. I think that's fine. This is valid, and someone's yeah. going to appreciate it. And I mean, I don't think you should throw everything at the wall, but then again, I don't make music, but you seriously don't know oh. what's going to resonate with somebody. <clears throat> That's an interesting thing right here in the chat from Dan. Yeah. Uh, Dan Mason uh, says, uh, I got a bunch of emails after taking some sampled based stuff off Spotify. Yeah. That's like a tricky thing, too. Some of the stuff that, we, that has to be taken down, maybe it's because you're afraid if you leave it up, it's going to compromise your whole presence on oh, a yeah. certain platform. Absolutely. Right? Very good point. And... Oh, here's a Indy's got a question. Yeah, Indy here. does. I have next question in regards to the integrity of artist. How likely is it an artist removing their old work improves their old overall integrity, say to a newcomer or a big record label? That's an interesting question. What do you think True. about that? Well, I mean, I know a lot of acts back in the day when you know we didn't have all this <laughs> internet shit would put out a couple mm -hmm. solid releases and then they would have like an album of early work. It's very common, you mm -hmm. know. Curse have had the like the the early work album. Everyone has yeah. an early work album. Uh, and it's usually what, mm -hmm. like, later on for, like, the super collectors. Is it usually very good? Eh. <laughs> you know what's But really they still funny. release you it, you know? You know what? Like, that's the thing is, like, uh, you know, the integrity, how likely it is in removing the work. Yeah, you know. We got a couple Curse of Fans in chat. Hell yeah. That's funny. It's kind of like, it's really a funny thing. Like, you know, does that help you or does that hurt you removing all your stuff? I don't know. Like, yeah. Hmm. I guess it's up you to the artist what? at that point. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna bring up my uh, my little brother, my little bro, Male Tears, right? Yeah. I mean, Love I know that, that on Spotify right now, he only has 
his his album, which he considers to be the first Male Tears album. But right. you know, there's two other Male Tears albums, obviously that maybe he doesn't feel represent him that well. But honestly, True. I still love them. And yeah. the guys have thank God I have them saved because I don't even know are they on his band camp still? I'm not I sure. Don't know, I man. have That's them. That's where you I'm get gl- the super I'm glad fans. I have them. But I understand that like you know sometimes you go in one direction. Maybe you want to refine that. And um, but I I love those two albums. I'm glad I have them. But I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Like, what does integrity even mean, right? Like, right. you know, it's way. I, I don't know. I guess it's like a perception thing. Yeah. Alex I mean, brings up a good point. Mesh sometimes has I that. think about it. Sorry, Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go, man. No, talk, talk. Alex no, had no, a really interesting off, point in the uh, the chat. Mesh has that Seagate release with like yeah. 300 tracks or some shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, um. um yeah. All right. So. So really quick, I guess let's. I'm going. I guess I should, let me do. Um, let's take one second. Let me do a music rack, and then let's go Please back to some more questions and link our buddy Chlorine Mist on I'm in a moment. Hungry for some uh, more my, wrecks. My music rack uh, for this week is going to be that new Donor Lens album, uh, Error Area. Uh, I really, cool really am enjoying that album a lot. I think that cover for it is really perfect because the whole album sort of feels like this sort of rain of chimey synthesizers just pouring down and flowing through different sorts of interesting mm. uh, internet uh, 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 like, like I picture all these little chimey synthesizers kind of falling through almost like a wave like maze and just leading me down into this strange sort of sinkhole of ideas and confusion you can when I listen to that album I can feel sort of time kind of disappearing and breaking apart and then trying to come back together in a new way and then falling apart again but it's not like cracking apart it's just sort right. of um gently separating and then moving from solid into liquid and then flowing down into another maze and then reforming again but ever so volatilely into the new song and then that's like the way the album flows in my opinion and it's a pretty fun experience and the vocals are really beautiful there's some very beautiful vocals on that album so i'm gonna highly recommend the donor lens album error area right now error area and, uh, <clears throat> yeah go ahead and, and let's st- throw that link up there if you don't mind because you damn sure know how I'll to sell that. an album bro very well oh, thank very you. well stated yeah. All right. Do you want to introduce the guest? Uh, we can very to badly. Talk to him and get some questions from the chat. Get some more ideas flowing. Some more concepts brewing. Some Absolutely. More I really want to talk know about what, uh, on this Monday night. I really want to know what Dylan has to say. Um, hope you don't mind that I used your name. I guess I should have asked for consent first. Um, we're gonna bring up somebody I'm very excited about having on Hot Takes. Our first non vaporwave guest, uh, Mr. Chlorine Mist, uh, half of acclaimed instrumental hip hop duo Friendzone. If any of you guys, and I know we got a couple super fans in the chat, if any of you guys do not know who Friendzone is, and you like instrumental hip hop, like Eric Dingus, the Main Attractions Crew, all the Greenova guys, um, or just any sort of instrumental hip hop, vapor trap, just trap in general, you've got to check out Friendzone. They've been around for a long time, and you've got to check out Dylan's solo work, Chlorine Mist. Beautiful stuff. We're extremely excited to have Chlorine Mist on hot takes today so i'm gonna go ahead and ask you to uh, go ahead i want to definitely get back to a question that i click was talking about is there any is there ever too many releases for an artist yeah Do they ever, is there ever i thought too that much? was a great point. but why don't we wait till we get let's get chlorine mist in yeah first, maybe though. we can see what chlorine so mist that question that was that's a very interesting topic go ahead and unmute yourself my guy hey All right. what's hey. up hi you guys can still hear me? Yeah, yeah you hear you great. great buddy. Chat, let us know if you can hear uh, Chlorine cool. Mist. Um, hope you don't mind that I use your first name. Um, but uh, why, why would I care about that? Don't know. I should have asked ahead of time. <laughs> Some people in this scene are very, Sometimes, very anonymous. So uh, Bakari <laughs> Online says hi. And uh, we want to know what you think about some of the things that we discussed before we move on to some other topics. They were all interesting topics. Um like removing your music from the internet like a lot of artists that i like have even removed like main attractions they removed some of their music videos from the internet and i preemptively downloaded them you got to go on dat piff for most of that shit now without their permission <laughs> yeah and they have like six <laughs> different band camps too which doesn't help because i guess i felt adamantly that they absolutely don't have the right to take their video down so i like <laughs> right. it too much uh, I mean, I, I've taken a couple 
things down, but not because I don't want it to be out, only because I wanted to re-release it later. Yeah, that's, that's a that's valid a point too. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could have like a fans-only I mean, release. It is true. You could have like some music that like sucks, <laughs> that you feel like is garbage, uh, that you like don't want anyone to know that you made it. Good but point. I feel like uh, you you could take it down. And if people actually like it, they can put it back up themselves. Fair. But you that might also be the point where you want to change your, like, alias and start, like, a new project. So you can start fresh and not be associated with that other stuff. Yeah, that's Like, yeah. I've done that. That's a really valid point. Times. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You're holding the good shit back from us, oh, bro. Yeah. <laughs> For the uh, inevitable well, Patreon. Well, I mean, I've been making this music forever. I've been making music since I was like 14. Mm -hmm. All right. I like, I was in like four bands in high school. Hell yeah. Like, I, I had a, I had Pro Tools when I was like 13. Cause Jeez. my dad gave me his old Pro Tools computer. I still so do I not compromise how to use Pro Tools. So if you were uh, using you Pro Tools again? in 13, that's amazing. <laughs> what made you want to get into cool. music? Um, I guess I was always, interested in it just i like i really like like when i was 10 and 11 i really liked metallica mm -hmm. and corn mm -hmm. i was like this is like Very the most cool. amazing shit <laughs> and i just want to be just like these people and i feel like that still i mean i just i want to be just like jonathan davis of corn right <laughs> James former Seth pod fan metallica. <laughs> so i can I relate i never i never yeah <laughs> um, I am curious also what you think about the idea of there being such a thing as too many releases. Is there such a thing? That's an interesting question. There are like some artists where they have like a hundred albums, and it, like like Sun Ra and right. like uh, like James Farrow's got a lot of uh, shit. Ruin. <laughs> So, so let me hold right, on for Farrow. one second because you're mentioning like James Ferraro, Sun Ra. Do you think that it depends on the artist? Like when I think of Sun Ra, I totally am, am like, yeah, of course that guy has a lot of albums. But do you think you have to get right. to a certain point? You have to curate a certain type of image for yourself, get a certain a bit of acclaim before you can justify doing that? Or do you or do you think that it's well, you know, anybody should just do that? I mean, some artists, it's like that's the appeal and that's actually how they make their name for them so all i mean is that they True. have like so much to offer and mm -hmm. it's like a an endless thing that you can go through and find the new stuff every time you like check them out mm -hmm. but it is yeah. like as an artist it is something that you'd be concerned about because like what if you made something that you think is like your magnum opus and mm -hmm. you think that well what if it's going to be lost in the in mix the wash of, like, of all of... this other shit all right, and like, how yeah. are people gonna know that this is like your like your really good album? I don't think really I could pick out Mare's Bow's definitive release. Right. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, and with, like some artists like that, it does seem like like well, they'll like, like, it's like your albums are like becoming like disposable at this point. But uh, good but point. But if you are making stuff <clears throat> that it's really, um, like historically like important like mm. Sun Ra. It's like, I'm glad that he documented absolutely everything that he was doing. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, it, we need that for posterity. Yeah. And Very it's, a bit of, it's important that we have all that documented. Yeah. And it's a bit of, it's a bit of a gamble to go that direction as an artist. You have to be very secure in that if you release something and you release a lot of things that some people may not hear everything you do. Do you know what I mean? One of the things that almost keeps me from releasing too much stuff is that I don't want other things I did to be lost in the fray. Like I don't think I could ever right. be a novelist because I would just like all my sentences. I'd be like, I worked really hard on this sentence. Pay attention right. to this sentence. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right? I, I feel like you have to be a certain kind of personality right. to be okay with putting out a lot of stuff and thinking people aren't going to hear all of it, you know? Because there's no way they can. And you've got to be it's a gamble it's a risk that your best album or your best work or your your, um, your magnum opus could get lost in the fray of everything else you know it's just another way to look at it but if you are sun Ra, you know that's 
you're, that's it's good. You mentioned it's really good that we have this all documented, and it's absolutely correct. That way, it can be a big right. journey if you want to get into it. Indie brings up an interesting point, yeah, I wanted which is to point a bigger that problem, though, in my opinion, is too much too fast. A lot mm -hmm. of albums is cool, but over a long period of time, a lot of items in a short period makes me feel like how much can an artist be thoughtful about all these? Now, that's an interesting question. I feel that. You know, sense. can that be that, I think, that something? Yeah, I think that it's a bigger concern now. Mm -hmm. in the internet era where everything's streaming and there's so much music available mm -hmm. that it's already like hard to not get lost in the mix because there's so much stuff coming out that like well you know back in the day you know there was like maybe 20 big bands and mm -hmm. right you know you just go to the album record store and you buy the cd so you actually care about it and well mm -hmm. like w today you know you stream the record on your computer you mm -hmm. may never return to it again Mm. And um, it seems like music has become more disposable as compared to the Unfortunately. Uh, physical music era. You could buy an entire mm, disc which, yeah, for $4.20 mm. on Bandcamp. It's true that right. it, you can make the argument that it's become more disposable, which is true, right? But at the same time, it does empower a lot of people to produce art because it is so easy Absolutely. to have a platform now, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I think it's an I unintended consequence of a wonderful thing. It is bigger. The benefit is larger than the negative. Because Holy before, of course, yeah. it was like you, you could only put music out if you had like a label like approving mm -hmm. the shit. That, and they thought that what you're doing is marketable. Yeah. When maybe <laughs> yeah, you're right. putting out something that's like so innovative that the record label doesn't know that it's marketable. Yeah. Right? Like people that take those big risks. You can... Now it's in your power to you put the shit out, mm -hmm. and um, like you know you get signed to a label if you even do that after you make an impact by yourself by uploading your stuff online. That's how it works now. That is a is very better. interesting point, and that's a very yeah. interesting point. That's how it works now. First is you got to you let's see what you can do, right? Like let's see how you can navigate this world that we currently this cultural you know landscape that we currently operate in with music right you have to navigate it first sometimes i meet people who are a little bit older uh, or maybe just not very savvy w about the internet or what's going on right now and they put out a, a demo and i asked them well how are you going to promote it and they said well i don't know i was going to think about hiring somebody to help me with social media you know help right. me get on a this playlist or something and i have to be like that's not how this works <laughs> like you have to like you have to do it yourself well, like, you, have, mm -hmm. you have to do it now you have to make your presence and you have to you, if you hire someone and you've never like bothered to sort of make connections in this little world that we have to work through now to get ourselves heard so i think someone's just going to take advantage of you because they know you don't know anything about the current music scene climate right you know it's like a it's, little very bit different. Of it's a little of that yeah. i think that in this era well it is important to have the skills to promote yourself on like without any help which is completely possible and every artist should have this skill and they should be very good at it. But I think that also when you're trying to do like a large release and you're like, you want to go on tour and you want people oh. to come out to your show all yeah, over the place. Yeah, that's a whole different like, thing. Yeah, you definitely want to get some of that. At me, this me. era, that is more important than being on a record label. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. You instead for of sure. hiring, instead of signing to a record label, you should just hire a PR company and give them like five thousand dollars and put let them get you spots in newspapers and the. Although, I feel like lately the there's a lot less music journalism nowadays. There really so that's is. That's what I was literally Blogs just about to bring up. Is that there's a lot less. Mu oh like, my god! And there was a, there were there. I, well, uh, that's an issue. Nobody question, reads them right? anymore. What happened? Okay. What? Yeah. Well, okay. You know, I don't know. So that's an interesting question, yeah, right? Like, either. what happened? Like, you're right. Because if you go back to like 2008 through 2012 or 2013, there's a lot of like homemade blogs that are coming out, releasing, you know, releasing their, their reviews of things, promoting different releases. I don't know. There was this big swell back 
in that time period of I could be the next, I don't know, Gorilla vs. Bear or my old Kentucky right. blog or Brooklyn Vegan. There was like, they saw other people doing it and getting successful and people were turning to these things for their music. And I kind of actually know a little bit about what happened here. I have a theory of what happened here. I don't know. I think that eventually, I mean, okay, so if I tell you the mo the bit, if I said to you, what's the biggest music blog of like the late 2000s, early 2010s, maybe in the 2000s as well, what's the biggest music blog? The most well-known music blog. Well, aside from Pitchfork. Pitchfork. No, Pitchfork. That's the answer. Pitchfork is the answer, right? Yeah. Pitchfork did this thing towards like the, I don't know, like the late two, like the mid, uh, the early two, towards the tail end of the early 2010s. Pitchfork started giving a lot of uh, like 10 star, or was it 10, 10 review, 10s, like perfect 10s, to a lot of shit that I didn't really care about. Like there was a lot of pop albums and a lot of like very, very, very mainstream hip hop albums that they were giving 10s to constantly. And I think right. it betrayed the, the trust of the readership. Mm, and I definitely. think after that happened, people were like, are they just trying to get people to come to the website more often? Are they just trying to like, exp like grow too much? Oh, Can I really yeah. trust this I website anymore? I saw that in anymore? the blogosphere too. And I really believe that once Pitchfork started doing that, people didn't trust blogs quite as much anymore. They thought they were kind of being sold something at this point. And then they started yeah. looking at vlogs. That's when the Anthony Fantano starts to become a little bit more popular, right? Good point. And then right. from that, now we are going to curate its Spotify playlists or recommendations from people who are considered to be influencers in mm -hmm. this world. And so that's kind of what where we've moved to now. And I don't know what will happen next. We'll see. I don't know. Right. But this is a, this is just listen. I'm just it's just I'm just spitballing here. I'm just looking looking back. You know what I mean? And thinking about it. And that might have had something to do with it. So because like a lot of times when like the biggest monolith in a sphere begins to kind of shake the smaller ones begin to shake too and True. you know and then i just think a lot of people also just kind of got older and realized that writing a blog is hard mm. producing you know all those words about somebody and writing them down and then seeing that maybe you don't get that much interaction you know it can kind of um can kind of be discouraging Sad. i was really happy back then because that's like you know it's when i started it was around 2010 and it was like really fun because you could like set like you could write like 20 emails a day and like send them to some new blogs and see if someone would review you. And right. I remember every time I picked a blog, I would try and see if there was somebody I knew that they were talking about once in a while, whether it would be like Mirror Kisses or, um, you know, or, or Mesh or someone like that. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe they'll listen to my stuff too. And I'll, I would mm -hmm. read their blog and I would go through it a little bit. And I would, the way I would email them was I would go through their blog, several posts, I would read everything, you know, just to interact to show I was definitely interested in what they were writing. And when I would write my email, I would also say, and I really liked your article about blah, 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 blah. Very that nice. That usually helped a lot. But we can't do that anymore, right? It's too bad. And I, you know, I don't know if we'll ever be able to go back to that again now, right? Damn, we got some needle Time drop haters in the chat. Luxury Elite oh, says, hot fun. take. I think it's lame that people base their opinions on the needle drop ratings. And then I click I follows it up with saying, needle drop is yes. for normies. <laughs> well, that's what I think. I think that's that true. we're... we're we're kind of going to, well, you know, slowly we're going to move away from that if we haven't already moved away from it to begin with. And you're going to, and now people are looking at probably playlists. Have, already have. We probably already there have. There are right? any more actually brand really watch new it. genres. Yeah, I don't watch it. So I, I assume I'm not watching it. Now. Yeah, man. Not yeah, I don't know. People. Not, I guess not, right? Because I don't really watch it that much. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't watch it all. It's little B. Oh, God. oh, did he yeah, really? I remember that. That was, <laughs> dude, dude, that was ridiculous. Like, who does yeah, that? When, I mean, Everybody I loves little bees. Yeah. Like, I don't like this. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. How could you, um, how could you, how could you do you that to little bee, dude? How could like you it. criticize that? That's You just don't like the base fun. God. You criticize exactly. that, right? He's perfection. I agree. I agree. It's, like, um, it's blasphemous. It's complete blasphemy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I guess we so I suppose we've moved more to Spotify playlist curators or maybe influencers who have some idea it about music. What is that what we're doing right now? Do you think that's I where think we're at? Spotify I guess. I mean, right now it's how music is promoted. Spotify playlists. Mm. To its, its credit, it's pretty good. Way music is promoted. I don't mm. use Spotify, is, but I know a lot of people. It's pretty. They find some good shit, which is nice. Mm. True. Yeah. It's like democratic. We're like, you know, you don't, you're not going in with like a bunch of preconceptions. It just comes on on the playlist. And you yeah. hear it. If you like it, you put the, it, you the, save the it. The algorithms yeah, are pretty good. Yeah, I like good. that. It's very democratic, right? If you right. don't like it, you don't save it. And then, you know, if you like Man, one song. This whole song, era, I think, people, I think that music has become much more democratic thanks to the internet. For sure. Because 
Like now, it's like you get signed to a label because you got a certain amount of listens on your own. Mm -hmm. That means, like, it's actually, it's like voting. Like, mm -hmm. there's right. many people, like, you got a million people listen to your song. That's why you got signed to the label. Not because they think that you fit their, like, predetermined, like, boy band image or whatever. Yeah. Which is That's how it used to operate. It's funny how it used to operate because, it, you know, you would go to the record store and you had a certain amount of stuff that you could buy. And that was, you know, just your option was based on somebody's opinion of what you should be listening to, right? And there was a whole lot of right. other stuff you weren't going to find. But it was like whoever was in charge of this label, whoever was, it was this like a or dictatorship. that. dictatorship. It kind of was, you right. know what I mean? And you figured out what you liked underneath that dictatorship. <laughs> and now there's so many choices, right? You had to figure out what you liked underneath that that hegemony, if it, as it were, right? You right. know, it's funny. Um, you know, uh, but that's true. With like the interesting thing about the Spotify playlist, or, or or it doesn't even always have to be a Spotify playlist. It could be just a popular Spotify, a playlist by someone else on Spotify, right? Could be the what Skelly listening to this week. Could uh, be. Playlist, Maybe you right? should but drop you a like link a song down on there. I will do that, but it's like you could find a song on that, and if you like one song from that playlist, then you can hit it, and you can like create a radio station from it, right? And then you can start going through more stuff, and then maybe you like a song on on that radio station, you can create a radio station from another artist. From, yeah. You're right, it can keep spiraling. But I do wonder, you know, who's in charge of that? Like, how does this Dude, work? The day yeah, they made it to where exactly anyone could works, upload right? to Spotify was the best day ever. Also, I people here's were my other thing about the Spotify stuff is like. And here's my other thing about the internet in general is that like I, some stuff is inflated. Like there is the thing about the internet is it's it's a lot like reality, yeah. except you can fake things a lot easier on it. Like you know what I mean? Like True. you can really True. like this happens all the time. You know you can fake Absolutely. things so easily on the internet. Like every influencer you've ever seen or everybody you've ever seen who has like hundreds of thousands of follows on Instagram 100% it's fucking fake so this is mm -hmm. what you do if you if, guys if you want to be an influencer this is all you really need okay. to do right now if you want to look like one at least is you just go on Instagram <laughs> you will you go follow the yep. maximum number of people you can a day I think it's like 100 or 150 and then the next day you unfollow them all and then you do it again and then you unfollow them all and then you do it again and you just do this over and over and over again and this is exactly oh if you want to talk to a brand consultant they'll tell you to do this it's not like i'm making this shit up really? but like the it's internet a lot of this stuff is an illusion which is why i love vaporwave so much because of the acknowledgement of the illusion of the internet as a thing as reality right. it's interesting to me right um but that's like a thing like you can the, the internet's like reality except it's fucking easier to manipulate you know what i mean but this goes back yeah. to the integrity of the artist right do you want to be that kind of person you know what yeah. I mean, right? A lot of artists, though, I mean, it's not even, you don't even need to put that much work where you actually follow all these people. Like, I mean, like on Twitter, I don't know if it, how it works on others, but like you can, on Twitter, you, can, you just go to a website and just buy fake followers. For like right, there's got to be some sort of That's program. That's crazy. Right now. Oh, like, how does that even work? And where do those followers even come from? And they're like, how you get like bargain bin versions of that and then like right. expensive versions of that? <laughs> Let me tell you one time what happened to me once on Instagram is I don't know how I got hacked. But I got hacked on Instagram and then like all of a sudden I was just trying to follow somebody and I get this alert that says you have the maximum you're following the maximum amount of people right now and I'm like that's fucking impossible because I don't yeah, that's not no that's not possible it takes a lot I don't I think like 10,000 is like the amount What's uh, the maximum, maximum amount? number right I think it's like 10,000 10, I guess so that's why like I know a lot of stuff is fake because if, if I can only follow 10,000 people then how the fuck does this website that sells like I don't know, fucking wooden cuckoo clocks for dollhouses have like one three hundred thousand like follows. Like you know, not that many people want to follow that shit. Like oh that's God. fucking nuts. This is such an illusion. I can't even take it sometimes. It's hilarious. Um so but I got hacked and I looked and I had to unfollow every single one of these fake things that followed me. And I oh obviously what happened was that somebody this is like probably the bargain bin shit. Like if you want to pay extra money, it'll give you like real followers. But if you want to pay like ten dollars on Instagram, yeah, there's probably some fucking Russian bot that like hacks people and forces them to follow you, right. like without even having to do. Like it's just really, really shady. And it was funny because like I saw a few celebrities, really like fucking D-list celebrities that I was following all of a sudden, like fucking like Jillian. Michaels I had some shit like that like, happen to me. Like, fucking back Biggest in the day. Loser or some shit. Fake like accounts. I was like now following this person, and I'm like, what the fuck? I don't give a fuck about Jillian. 
Michael's from The Biggest Loser. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm not following you, but obviously she's a D-list celebrity. Probably use that $10 follow thing, man, right? There's a bunch of other ones on that. That has got to be the, the worst rated music right now. Most fucking trashy pop culture bullshit. Like, that was the one that like, I could think of the most. Most of them were just a bunch of assholes who defined themselves <laughs> with three words, like brands, like fun, travel, you know, peacefulness right. i don't fucking well, know <laughs> like you know it's well, just so building. weird the way that people do that and it's like this weird version of live laugh love but for yourself like it's so right dumb. <laughs> anyway what else we want man to that has right got to be the worst trend in music right or my least favorite for sure um what, what? are what that just the the follower culture the influencer culture um, well you know it's what do you think about that yeah i want to um, know what you think uh dylan what, what do you think is the worst trend in music because i got thoughts but go ahead i thought what specifically? Go ahead, Isaac. Say it one more time. I, I want to know, what do you think is the worst trend in music right now? Oh, the worst trend in music right now? Or your least yeah. favorite trend. You know, it doesn't have to be objective. Can be... Um, that's a good question. I don't know. No worries. I feel like well, it's pretty interesting right now. There's like, there isn't like a set thing that's going to be the next thing or at least i haven't identified what it is you're right usually i feel like i can usually i feel like i know what the next thing is like i knew after noise music that like experimental hip-hop and ambient were going to be the next things right but the death grips and stuff now i'm not sure what the I think it's really open ended now because Did well, you see Hyperpop music coming? Has become, um well I, actually I think that, that that makes sense. Because like uh like I mean like artists like Rusty and stuff like that came out and PC music. If Yeah. Yeah, and um there's it it makes so much sense. Yeah, like PC music. Like cuz uh, cuz now it's like you can make all you can the there's no limit to the music that you can make because everything's virtual you know you have like to do what you can do now on a laptop used to cost millions of dollars and like had like you have to have a huge studio and all this hardware mm. to like yeah. do that like you know mm. 10 15 years ago and which isn't um, even that long ago when you think about right? it right it's crazy right. how fast it's changed <laughs> and, <laughs> right and now it's like the I feel like the real expectation now is you have to actually create your own genre of music. I mean, to really yeah. establish yourself as like yeah. an artist like, yeah. that you will be like, of, remembered. And it, it's kind of almost easier to do that now because all the music you want to listen to is at your fingertips. Like before, as you mentioned, we would have to go to the store and buy the album. And then so probably what was going to influence the music you made was the few albums that you could afford to listen to and buy. You know what I mean? Or whatever was on MTV or the radio. And now everything is right here all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's amazing yeah. to me that anything is like super Can you afford Tidal or not? Everybody is just curating their own existence all the time. Like I don't know why. Like you can listen to so much stuff. Anything from any era. It's so crazy. So now when you listen to something, every time you make a choice to listen to a song, you're making a choice against the history of all music to listen to that one song. And that's pretty fucking cool and a big honor. You know what I mean? Like that's a big honor when somebody listens to your music now because they have at their fingertips all the musics. Right. All the musics from all the different eras. Absolutely. And that's kind of fascinating, right? And they chose you. All right. Yeah. And it, it's cool. Yeah. And yeah. it's like it's intimidating, I think, from yeah. an artist's perspective, but it's also um, very powerful. I think that yeah. it leads to. I think that we there's the potential for more interesting music to be created now than ever before. There can be an explosion like of creativity. It's just like absolutely, you know, like if Mozart people level people are working with the kind of. Uh, tools that are at their disposal right now mm -hmm. because before you know like 300 years ago you needed like to have the budget for a whole orchestra to like right this kind of music yeah you need to have you the know? budget you for a whole orchestra like, yeah. like, get all those right? people together have, like, and have the sponsorship queen, like, from the chapel or whatever you, yeah that's exactly uh -huh. right that's really funny right. you had to literally have like kings and queens like sponsoring you absolutely you know, that are like some right. sort of fascinating like exceedingly right. wealthy like family name like whether it be like the right. medicis or the borgias like you had to have like the wealthiest people in the world 
behind you to yeah. get your art out there, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. crazy. And at that time, <laughs> think about how many excellent, are potentially excellent musicians and songwriters that could never, didn't get the sponsorship. Yeah, and they right? just, like we'll never know about them. Well, that's like um, you, you know. So, so yeah, but that's now like... anybody anybody who has the talent can do it if they just have a computer. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I mean, that's actually kind of where um, you know, it's funny you mentioned about you know, like if you didn't have, you know, like the sponsoring of a king or queen or extremely wealthy family behind you, and you were kind of just you know poor on the streets. And uh, yeah, your right. art was never going to be heard, and that's kind mm -hmm. of almost like where you know the phrase like bohemian like like comes from originally. Like there's that um, you know there's the opera by uh, uh, Puccini, La Bohème, which is like just opens with like a poet like just like burning his uh, work for just to have fire, <laughs> like to keep Ooh. himself warm. Like I think that's like the opening scene of that right. opera, and that's what that deals Yikes. with. It's like the that, the artists of that era who were brilliant and talented, but like lived in like you know the the slums. You know, just but they were artists, and that's all they could do because they were born that way. But they didn't have the backing of a king or queen, right? So they're just bohemians. Right. Interesting. They're all those people, we probably yeah, there's probably yeah. so much great art that we just never gonna know about from that era, right? I want to take it back Absolutely. a second. You mentioned. Is, um, I mean, that's most of history. Yeah, you mentioned man, most of history. Yeah, most of history, like until like kind of now. Right. And it's, now here we are complaining until about like twenty years ago. That's yo, how dude. It was. And here we are talking about like the internet and like once in a while something gets taken down, but for the most part everything's always up, you know. And so, pretty crazy. Yeah. It's pretty huge crazy. Bounty. Yeah. So now a, like, a topic you, you guys had brought up earlier. You guys had talked about how you uh, your influences would be based on like whatever album you could afford uh, growing up. Yeah, you had to be. What very, are some yeah, of your biggest careful. influences, Dylan? Yeah, that's a good question. What art, uh, artists, well, weather, whatever. Aside Let's from Metallica say... and Corn. Aside from Metallica and Corn, of course. Yeah, let's <laughs> those, add to that. Those to, were when I list. was like a kid. Those, that was, I learned every single Metallica song on the guitar when I was like twelve. But um, <laughs> yeah. God, I wish Jess was in here because I want to get back to this. But like, it's a very fascinating thing. Like the first time you come in contact with the concept of a rock star. You know what I mean? The idea that that can be a thing. Right. And it's like, holy fuck, I want to be <clears throat> corn. I want to be Metallica. I rock star. Right. Amazing. I didn't know this. it could be like this. But anyway, right. I just back back to what you it's were like, saying. What else would you want to be? Oh, dude, exactly. exactly. But, what they're doing is awesome. I know. But, uh, <laughs> you were saying. Like, uh, I, I would say that probably the biggest influences would be um, early on, like, full of glass, Einstein on the beach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Steve Reich. His mu music for 18 musicians and his uh, uh, electric counterpoint with Pat Metheny. Wow. And then yeah. also, uh, I was really big influenced by like My Bloody Valentine's yes, Loveless album. Absolutely. I think I thought it was all the one of the most important albums I think ever released. I think the almost textures. every artist who does something challenging in some way, that's like. That's in their right. in their head. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's crazy. Right. I can't believe that. I, that album is. It's like one of they those. They really albums established like, the importance of like texture. Yes. In music. Absolutely. It's like yeah. something that's mm -hmm. been built upon um, recently by artists like um, like Ariel Pink, mm -hmm. and then the, and that, and now more recently like the entire vaporwave genre is all about yeah. the texture. Mm -hmm. You know, like very the, much like, so. The effects and shit. Sort of sound. Like that's what it's all about, and like if it was pristine, that would like ruin it. Right. And I think that that's very like a uh, really important part of things. And that uh, probably one of the biggest artists that influenced me, of course, is One O Tricks Point Never, his album Bricks. Oh my God. Very that's nice. That's funny. I love One O Tricks Point Never, and I it's, it's really funny because everybody who's an artist either with you know it, within this sort of experimental world that's like vaporwave and all the other things around it and all the people who interact with each other, everyone's got like their favorite one of tricks point never album oh yeah that's the one that's like who that, cares what your name. zodiac sign is which opian album is your favorite <laughs> i'm like i'm like a big fan of russian right. mind oh <laughs> like garden of delete like the beatles right now mm -hmm. i would say i mean the beatles of the modern era or he like really well it's him and then before that, I would say Crystal Castles was mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. a huge, very really influential. important artist. Yeah, because that kind of opened you up. Like, once you listen to Crystal Castles, you're like, oh, I bet there's some more stuff out here like this. Like, right. let me look for it. Right. You know, and then you and get, and then you kind of start it, finding other things. Right. And it's like you could make music that was like, that has the same kind of power as like a rock music. 
on your laptop. That right. was when that was established. Like, that's like, a really you don't good need a whole thing. band. No, you sir. This music that's on a recession era music what? right there. What a, that's a that's a fascinating point right there mm -hmm. about how Crystal Castles kind of makes this I make the concept of um, you know, you don't need a whole band to do this and you can be have the same energy as rock music. And I think that right. Death, Death Grips kind of did that too. I mean, they me. started right. doing that with soundtracks yes. in the 80s with Jan Hammer and um you know, Tangerine Dream and shit, oh, and course. people oh, hated yeah, it for when sure, they got rid of the orchestras. Sure. They hated it. For sure, for sure. Something about the Crystal Castles that had that punk energy to it, though. You know what I mean? True, very much so. Right. It's like you could actually Alice have Glass's like, vocals. It wasn't 100%. Yeah, man. Yeah. That was what people thought of electronic music before. That was just oh, this is just techno, like. <laughs> <laughs> and which is like, I mean, that stuff was all right, but it was just like it was very same. He didn't speak it was like to very. He, he was very yeah. It didn't speak to me. It didn't speak to me when I. But 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 that. But right. Crystal Castle spoke to me. The only and band showed that like you can have passion in electronic music. He showed you right. can have passion in electronic music. I think right. I could agree more with that statement for sure. Um, it didn't have yeah, to be as I mean, cold and callous as it used to be, and futuristic, well, you know, like, and hyper digital. Yeah. And, it's, I mean, there were some artists, you know, Super Apex niche, Twin was you know, really very interesting. Of course, of course. But, True. You know, yeah, Apex Twin fair, was kind of in a world of I mean, their even own, Even Apex right? Twin doesn't have, like, the power of, like, you can't have, like, a mosh pit to Apex Twin, but you mm. can to the Crystal Castle. For sure, for you sure. To, uh, and, like, Apex to Twin Daddy. is kind of, like, in their own world, right? Well, kind right. of, but not the same, well, man. Well, I mean, there's yeah. that whole idea. Okay, all right, so, yeah. the, like... Isaac, like when I listen to even any Apex Twin, even come to Daddy, it sounds like one person. It sounds like I'm in their vision. I fucking love it. It's mm -hmm. beautiful music, but it's like this is this person's world. But yeah. Crystal Castles, it was like this is a rock band. You're like, absolutely, band you're absolutely I, right. You yeah, know, it's a very different. I'm just playing you know devil's what? advocate. I think that was very important. Like it was incredibly, uh, it totally changed the course of music. And I would it, say that all sure, after yeah. that, like almost more artists were like laptop based than bands. Yeah, for right. really that, did. I was in a band. I yeah, me, me I was too. In a rock band. I um yeah, it's interesting. Um, so like, you know, gosh, I'm trying to trying to put this all into like context. Um, you know, it's funny too because when I think of uh, a lot of electronic music, maybe in like the '90s, like it's just like it's it's its own world, it's its own vibe, and I did enjoy it. But it was like never, tw never the twain shall meet with like right. rock and like and, and techno. And the techno people, I don't think they wanted to have anything to do with rock music for the most and part. Then dubstep you know? happened. You know, and it's funny when I think of like bands that were doing electronic music, you know, and the only the ones that spoke to me the most. And like clearly, the one that would speak to me the most was Daft Punk, right? I oh mean, yeah, yeah. That was a band that was um, making music that felt really like important felt, felt like important. indie rock. Felt felt like it could fit in with like an indie rock. People that playlist, didn't fuck with electronic. electronic music fucked with Daft Punk. Yes. Like I remember first time yeah. hearing Daft Punk when I was a kid, yeah. being like, "Oh, this will sound cool forever." Like there's other bands that came out around that time which I still like. Right. I'm gonna say this right now before I m make anybody mad. I still like them. I still enjoy them. But like, I remember hearing like Chemical Brothers or Dust Brothers or bands like that, or or Crystal Method, and being like, "This is really cool, but this is very of its time. Like, yeah. this is very, yeah. very, very, very dated, very, very '90s, uh, '90s-ish sounding stuff." And I don't know Absolutely. how often I'm gonna re how often I'm gonna revisit this unless I'm in the mood to revisit it. But that fuck, I'd revisit right. any fucking time, any day of the week. You know what I mean? Right. Same thing with Crystal Castles, actually, too, though. Somebody brought you know, up despite, Sufjan I, Stevens. I, 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 Were you a little bit of a Sufjan that... fan, Dylan? What? I think Sufjan Reese brought Stevens? it up. Sufjan Stevens. You said something about That's it, too. Kind of... oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that was like a, another artist I really liked when I was Same. Like, in high school. I still Especially love Sufjan. Illinois love that album. folk rock vibe. Illinois, so uh, you're going to go on record that's your favorite one? No. Nah. Illinois is Illinois. a masterpiece. Carrie and Lowell. Carrie and Lowell is fucking brilliant. The lyrics in Carrie and Lowell are so steeped with poetry and sorrow. I can't even get over how good that album is. It's fucking amazing. Um, I like Sufjan a, a great deal. I think he's an incredible artist. Why are we talking about Sufjan? Why did this even come up, actually? Because, like, what three happened? people mentioned Sufjan Stevens in the chat. Yeah, so I before I forgot I about it, I had to ask him. I just don't even know where it came from. But they're talking about Boards of Canada right now, actually. Now, there's another right. band that sort of <clears throat> operated outside time. You know what I mean? Like, when I first time I heard Boards of Canada, I remember thinking, like, I don't know when this was made. <laughs> like, whether it's, yeah, from the future I know, or whether right? it's from the past. Whether it's from the future, whether it's from the past, or whether right. I just fucking daydreamed it. And it's not even real. Absolutely. Like, yeah, I would say their music has become more relevant over time. More relevant, yeah. It's amazing, it isn't out. it? Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. And yeah. 
That's kind of what There's you want to do. Like a plaid is like that. Do you guys know plaid? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I love kind I love of from plaid. the same general era. Yeah, plaid doesn't Early get 2000s. talked about enough. I think their newest releases are their best. Work. Plaid is still making music. I I, wow, I don't wow. know if I've actually listened to their newest releases. I liked Plaid it's too because fucking awesome. I, I'm gonna do it now. I liked Plaid too because they had like a kraut rock streak in them as well. You know what I mean? Like they were really great. Oh, yeah, they, oh, they are really great. Yeah. Or are really great. I gotta listen to the new yeah, stuff now, that, then. bro. The soundtrack to that movie Tech on Concrete, that anime. I love oh, Tech on Concrete. Really cool. That's where my name comes from. Oh shit. Yeah, Kudo and Shido. What? Tech on Concrete, baby. Oh. That's the fucking movie, bro. How? Chris, you Look would love Tech on Concrete. I, I, I have never watched it. I'm going to watch he, it. But he's I a huge Satoshi Kon fan. Isn't it? I just, I just love all the way this, like, when we talk to people, uh, whether it be in the chat and whether it be our guests, like, all this shit, like, you know, like, it all comes together. Like, you can really see, like, the nodes of influence connecting together. Bro, Chris everybody. did a remix of a song from the Paprika soundtrack. I did. And it Girl fucking Biaco, slapped, I, bro. I, I've never released it. Nice. Yeah, I played a little bit of clips from it. I, I, uh, you know, you should release officially it. Officially released it. I guess I'll put it on like SoundCloud or something. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I love Paprika, so it would make my day. Me too. I love that. Um, it's a fucking good movie. Way better than Inception. I lo oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I just they're love almost the same movie. Well, Paprika, I just, it's, I really enjoyed. Inception's like a remake of Paprika. Low key, it's just sort of like a, it's like it's like a less interesting version of Paprika. Like Paprika is just like a very yeah. dreamlike, and Paprika doesn't mm -hmm. bother to explain itself too much. That's why I like about it right. is it doesn't bother to explain itself too much. And it's like when they're both like when you know when they're when they're both in the root in the scene together, they're like whatever, stop asking questions. Like this is more metaphysical. Yeah. You guys are supposed to feel this movie, not think about it. Right. Like feel things, don't experience think about it. and, and like, look at it. it. And then meanwhile, like a thing, uh, you know, some. Dumb shit like Inception is going to go out of its way to explain all the fucking rules of this world. Fuck you. I don't give a <laughs> fuck about art. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. I don't give a fuck about having to make sure this stuff all makes sense. That's such a fucking Hollywood thing to do. Yeah, it's such a Hollywood you thing to do. Feel yeah. like you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. how, uh, that's how we don't trust like, this audience at all. Movies, I think. Yeah, dude. They, they really think that we're idiots. They really think we're idiots. <laughs> like, and like, like the, the Blade Runner voiceover like, version. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. The original version. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's it's exactly like that. <sighs> Question for you, my guy. Are there any artists in your yeah. scene that you would consider an idol of yours or like a mentor? Well, a little B. I always say little B. <laughs> little B is everybody's really idol. Really inspired me. Yeah, Hell yeah. He was the guy who he showed me that I could make, I could produce for rappers. That's I never really thought of that before. You know, like when Friendzone originally started, we were think like we were big fans of Picture Plane. Hell and, yeah, um, yeah! Crystal Castle love Picture Plane. And, and Picture Plane, it's amazing. Yes, uh, but uh, especially yeah, like uh, his first album, and then the what's it the the what's the second album called? Dark Rift. Is it's that what that one is? So, Dark Rift is his first album. A first album. Second right. album. The oh, physical. the physical, yeah, the one that's on the. Uh, that was like really inspirational. Right there in the artwork that, that we made. We thought of ourselves as being like that kind of genre when we started, but then we saw Little B, and we saw how like the way that he worked was that he just just uh, like people just email him beats, and he just downloads them from his inbox, and right. whichever one he likes, he just raps over them. And there's all kinds of stuff like you know like like a like clams casino. Yeah, clams casino, literally. Oh my yeah. god, I'm god. Clams really casino. <clears throat> ah, interesting stuff. I love him so much. I love. I saw yeah, clams casino and... live. Hell yeah, dude! That must have been amazing. I saw him live too. I'm so jealous of yeah. you, motherfuckers. He just doesn't play that often. Yeah. So I just I remember he I remember he was playing um playing some festival in like Asbury Park in New Jersey and it was like so odd because he was like so out of place at it and he was playing early in the morning outdoors and it was just like a bunch of families and kids out there and like the headliners like bleachers or some shit and like I don't know what the fuck he was doing there but I was like I'm going to Asbury Park I'm going to go to Clams Casino like, am I reading this right let's done, go and yeah I, I did I didn't even believe it was true and when he's mm -hmm. done I like uh I, I you know I went and um and then he was done and then I was like, I'm out. <laughs> like, I was out. I was oh, there with dude. Uh, I've left yeah. after the opening act so yeah. many times. It's like, just because, like, well, that's who I really wanted to see. Nope. See you later, guys. 
Uh, although, also, there's people in the chat who apparently are not aware that you are half of acclaimed instrumental hip hop group Friend Zone. Yes, guys, Chlorine Mist is half of Friend Zone. Right. Shout out Friend Zone. Yeah. Yeah, it was like when Lil B came out with that album Six Kiss, and then he had uh, he put out like uh, like I'm God and Realist Alive and oh yeah, uh, what like all these tracks, and it was so mind boggling. And I was just like, because I was coming from like the noise rock scene, like I was really I right. Was, in a band that was kind of like Lightning Bolt or... I hear you from uh, some like, pretty crazy shows. Uh, AIDS Wolf. And yeah. <clears throat> those were like nuts. And, uh, uh, but then... Um, that was like what really saw, showed me that like... Oh, the rap can like is moving in that kind of direction where it's like... It's totally It's getting open. super experimental. As long as they can rap over it, mm -hmm. the music could be anything. And yeah, that was like it could. really inspiring and cause then you can collaborate and that's also really inspiring. And then, and so that's what got me and James, we started um, sending beats like to, uh, first we started sending beats to Lil B. He never used any of our beats it's, for some, some reason. It's true. Like but, uh, that's then, a really, it's really interesting point you said about like rap. I want to get back to what I'm just in for one moment. Oh, right. it's really, I didn't really think about that until you said it was like, yeah, all of a sudden rappers were using a lot of different did as long as they could rap over it it could be anything because, right i mean didn't right. um i mean uh you know asap it makes it like the most well, adaptable genre well we were talking about clams casino right and asap rocky was like mm -hmm. rapping over clams casino beats and asap um, rocky that's did crazy man i never really saw that happening but yeah man love clams casino love that show went to that show with uh you know my girlfriend at the time and uh, it's a touchy subject i, I miss her very much <laughs> so uh Oh, anyway, you guys back, produced a beat for ASAP, did you not? Enough of my sorrow. Get back to you. Yeah, we produced a Fashion Killer. Fashion, fashion killer. killer, right. I, I dropped that into a they couple had, of the uh, stories that I posted. Yeah. It was crazy. Rihanna was in the music video. Sick-ass yeah, song. Blackbird, Blackbird, I think, did a remix of it that was also really good. It was crazy. And, like, uh, what's it, like, uh... One of the Kardashians like shared it on her Spotify. Oh really? How wow. fun! Yeah. <laughs> In yeah, real, apparently, like, was not aware that y'all like, produced a screenshot the of killer. it playing on her phone on Instagram. Her pistol go. Like, what the fuck? That's a clean fucking song, <laughs> yeah, dude. That... Especially with those little vocal chops you do right after he goes, "Her pistol go." It's just. Uh, yeah. It's emotive, man. Uh, it's but, uh, like that was a really beautiful time. There were so many different artists coming out. Like I would say, like Space Ghost Perp came out around. Yeah, then. did and, like, yeah, they were all did, part sure. of like, one scene. Yeah, they were all part of the same scene. That's interesting. And, Dude, knew each other. I remember when you did the three Kuchibiru networks, and there were so many people all together. Main attraction: Shady Blaze, Julian Wass, all those guys. And I was just like, man, right. they got a whole community here. Uh, Gummy wow. Bear, it like you really had like beautiful. Witch House people on those mixtapes. It was sick, dude. Still, some of the coolest mixtapes. Are those mixtapes still available? Can I listen to this stuff? They, I, Is it, or are they off the internet? I have be, them. They should be on our SoundCloud. Oh, fun! All right. Good because they're Somebody fucking let amazing. Me know if they're not, I couldn't put them on Spotify because they're not because they're compilations. Yeah. True. And DistroKid like doesn't allow compilations. But I was thinking about maybe I'll just upload them anyways. Do it. Uh, they are a uh, gift uh, to uh, mankind. Honestly, I mean, worst case scenario, they'll take them down. Yeah. Worst, yeah. But I can try. Maybe they won't notice. That moment at the end of <laughs> one of them, I don't remember which one it is, but it has the first track is by you guys, and it's dark as fuck. And then there's like a main attractions and Shady Blaze song that's also dark as fuck. And then it flows right into this gummy bear song. Can't go wrong. It's like the coolest triptych like ever from that era it wow. was a really magic you gotta hear it chris it's, together, it's, it's so cool. remarkable it's sounding like i haven't heard anything I, that good other amazed. than maybe eric dingus maybe <laughs> oh because uh, we uh, i knew eric dingus too when he i um he, uh i recorded uh one of mandre's album yeah. mandre man from yeah. main attractions and eric dingus 
produced like three tracks on one of his Hell yeah. tapes. And wow. I wow. like this guy's pretty cool. I'm honestly it's surprised that the Green wow. Oval people haven't hung out with the Team Sesh people yet. Like, there's very little crossover, and I don't know why. Huh. Hey, what is? Remind me what Team Sesh. So is. Bones, Xavier what Wolf. Um, who else is on Team Sesh? There's a lot of beat makers that aren't as well known, but they're you know like Drip One Thirty Three. I know Bones. Eric Dingus, Bones, and Xavier Wolf. Like, I don't know why they're not hanging out with with wow. um, Mondre and Squad of B yet. Yeah, they should be. They should be. They should be. Really? Maybe they're right. just opposite mm. ends of the country. Who knows? No, Xavier mm. Wolf's in L.A. That's not too far. Drew oh, the yeah, architect. Well, Xavier uh, Wolf is from. He was from like the uh, what's 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 the what are they called? Uh, the Raider Clan. Yeah, Raider Clan. Mm. Originally, that was this Space so Ghost fun. Perps like stable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he was from them. Kid Space Henrik. Space right. like created that it was like his green nova i actually didn't know that it was the same like kind of thing lose all it's my just like right how asap rocky has his squad that's the asap yeah. squad true asap fan uh, and all that like man attractions had green nova mm -hmm. space ghost perp had the raider clan and there was a lot of really good artists on that oh and, there would be some uh, like, seriously godlike little ugly man now there's another there's another we oh, were actually wow. just yeah. talking he about started him started in raider clan I did not know that, dude. We were just this talking about fun. that today. And, um, I didn't know. It. I I'm learning a lot right now. This is pretty cool. Let's see I remember the first time I saw a picture of Little Ugly Man. I used to know him from the noise scene before. He was um, in a noise stuff, scene. Stuff started. Wow, this is blowing yeah, my mind I, right uh, now. He was from. He was from Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. They had okay. this yeah, whole, I did know uh, that. noise crew, and uh, they were called uh, the Church of Crystal Light. <laughs> they would have these like weird like um rituals for their shows where they would like be stirring like this big pauldron of crystal light i love light, that the like drink oh wow <laughs> they, they would all, do like, that wearing, at the shows like, like cloaks and yeah huh? it was like really creepy and <laughs> how fun <laughs> oh and they dude. had like all these other projects too and they were also it was called the palm kiki crew and Oh, uh, they, they were really cool. And then it was crazy how, like, uh, the same people kept popping up. Because I feel like um, there are certain people that are... A lot of the people from the noise scene moved into the um, experimental rap scene. That mm. was, like... It was just, like, the next thing that was happening in art. And then right. after... And then, like, maybe simultaneously or after that, it was then ambient kind of stuff started coming out mm -hmm. and it was like it was like the opposite of noise music mm -hmm. it was a part of big part of that was one o three point ever mm -hmm. and all, like <clears throat> i'll always all find it so fascinating how around. often noise people the the most like cacophonous music of all time right often happen to also produce some of the most euphonic music ever on the side and vice versa it's so interesting right. to me Right. Well, it was just it was the most artistically relevant like music at the time. So it was all the most artistically in tune people I think were making it, and right. the next things came along. Mm -hmm. And but um, I think like especially I think Space Ghost Perp, he was like the aerial pink of like rap. Right. Where kind he, of like a like, godfather. It's so textured, and it's, it sounds like it. It sounds like it's like a tape that was like got pissed on and like left in the curb <laughs> right. for like thirty years. It's mm -hmm. like what it sounds like when you listen to it, and it's like, and it evokes this like weird like. Uh, with with Space Ghost Perp, it's like sounds like almost like satanic. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. kind of like dark, this, like, yeah. Weird artifact that you stumble on, and um. Like you like you, you bought like a dresser yeah. at like a garage sale and found it right. in the dresser. <laughs> you got home. right. And I would, yeah, I would say that's like one of the things that like led to what is now called vaporwave, is because that's what vaporwave True. is all about is capturing this nostalgic feeling through these old s sounding uh textures yeah because it's not I, actually I, old it's actually new yeah but it sounds I think that... like it came from a bygone era it's like that you just stumbled upon mm -hmm. yeah like it just, that's like, like it, a big part of the maybe appeal of it nostalgia for a, a different... time that never really yeah. existed Sometimes I think it exactly. sounds like it's it's like from another dimension, and and it's way to our dimension. It was damaged, right? <laughs> like, or it's like you know, it's AI reality. trying to reproduce our memories. Yeah. 
It, it like it yeah. it fell through the wormhole and was warped on its way to our reality. <laughs> yeah, and it's like just as big of a factor in the appeal of it as the actual compositions. Because I mean, the compositions have to be good too. But I yeah, the course, texture is just as important. Yes, I think people got and really. That taught... wasn't a thing. No. Until I I think that it really got established as a thing in the post two thousand. Like yeah, it that, started with artists like Ariel Pink. Yes. Ariel Pink, I think, was a, like a lot more important than people give him credit for. True. He really, like, established that whole thing where it sounds yeah. like it's from, like recorded yeah. off AM radio. The Godfather of hypnagogic pop. Yeah. yeah. And um, Once again, you you probably you might not have like surfing without that. You know what I mean? You true. You might not have a lot of things without it. Um, so I yeah. think that also I think people kind of got very tired of everything being so cleanly produced. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It didn't. Right. It felt so, everything I sounded know, so like clinical. A lot of, a, well, a lot, a lot of it, it, especially so clinical, in the computer exactly. era, for sure, dude. And like a lot of like indie rock from the two thousands. Like I got so tired of listening to it because it was so sanitized sounding. Like there was just no excitement anymore. Right. It was just everything was so mm -hmm. fucking perfect all the time. Like yeah. those guitars was like man, it, man, it, and it's just like always like perfectly right. hit. It's right. so sanitized. Wait, wait, is that an Interpol song? You know I mean? <clears throat> no, I, I'm all right with Interpol. That was a block party song. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Interpol. Was no really offense to block party. Album. Yeah, I know. It's oh, yeah. I can't. Yeah. I know. Uh, I, I only said we do block love turn on the light lights. I knew that would be a controversial thing if I said it. I knew that it would be oh, dude. Riles I remember the it. day I told somebody that you weren't a block party fan. They were like, what? No. <laughs> it was hilarious. Don't care. Don't care for it. Don't care That's for too bad it. he's not in chat right now. I get it. I get it. I don't care I for it either. Wrong. Or Vampire no, Weekend. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Vamp <laughs> block party is a good, all right? It's just... I don't really want to listen to it. That's it. That's right. all there is. Yeah, it's, it's not objectively it's bad. It's completely fair. That's, yeah, that's that's it. Fair. That's not me saying they're bad at all. Uh, you know, no, this is hot takes, and the hot take doesn't mean we're saying things to make people angry. We're right. just looking at things from another perspective, and there are no wrong opinions. Popular. Yeah, it's okay yeah. to say your piece. Yeah. But it's all right. It's okay. But of course, they're just like, they're an indie rock band. Yeah, I mean, listen. It's like they are really, they are like a genre artist. They're and, good. You know, that only goes. So it goes far. so far. You, well, I, I mean, like that's why I think have moved to like computer based music mm -hmm. is that um, there's so many boundaries that like you can't really cross if you just like even though like obviously rock bands bring this entirely unique feel because it's actually live and I think that that's actually important it's actually missed right now but but there's so much things that you can do with if you're not restricted to just these four instruments not only that like, all of a sudden you can do man, lots of stuff for sure, dude. And not only that, but when you're not restricted to having to depend on like so many band members to be with you and to work together with them, when it's just you and or maybe somebody else, or if everybody you work with is uh, is like a guest that you collaborate with sometimes, you know, there are a lot of options now, right? Because you're not working within the framework right. of this, this, and this. Or if like the other problem is sometimes with a rock band is like, what happens when like one person doesn't want to play this song? What happens when one person has different ideas about how this thing should be done? And also, right. You know, we've been listening to rock music for a very long time, right? Like this has been a very that was a very popular genre from you know, roughly the '60s to the 2000s. You know, yeah. we, we, how much more can and you do with it? Like, <laughs> how much more can you do with yeah. it? <laughs> like, Especially because of how rock music is defined. Yeah. Like, what is rock music? If you don't have guitars or drums, is it rock music? <laughs> Crystal Probably Castles, not. right? That was why was it so interesting about Crystal but, Castles, right? Is that like, exactly. whoa, is this rock? Yeah, <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? That's is it why not? it set off kind of like a revolution, because all of a sudden those boundaries were all broken down. Mm. And it's the same thing like with rap. That's why mm -hmm. producing for rappers was so exciting, <clears throat> because yeah. what is the definition of rap? It's not guitar-based drums. Mm -mm. It's no. just a rapper and rapping over anything. <clears throat> Literally anything. Mm. Old so Raga like, records looped. Who cares? Right. It's just yeah. whatever is relevant at the moment, you can yeah. make a beat out of it. Yeah. Like and you make something that isn't relevant relevant by sampling it and turning it into something different. I love some of your sample right. choices, too. Like, I want to say one of my favorite songs from DX is an Air France song. And you take this, oh. like, kind of, like, kind of chill, kind of enjoyable, it. like, oh, it's Air France, and you turn it into this fucking banger, dude. Like, wow. stupid hard. <laughs> I know you know I which one I'm talking this. about. I gotta look this up. It's, it's I, I don't all know caps. this one. I gotta look this up. Yeah, man. Oh, I forget what it's 
Oh, it's the final track on DX. It's hard as uh, fuck, dude. But anyways, yeah, it's like on side B or something buried in there. I'm like, why did they put this on side B? Well, it's the final track on the first disc. Is it? I'm probably confusing it with another. But you know which one I'm well, talking the about. the second disc has so, a lot of good tracks, too. It does, it's, dude. It's like we had so much stuff going on at that time that we couldn't fit it. Well, I mean, we, that's why we just released like a two-hour album. Right. Because mm. we had so much stuff to release. It is called. And I go, well, there's, uh, there's still actually a lot of stuff left over. That's why um, I'm working on right now putting your out. Your Touch the, Your uh, Bliss, sorry. Your Touch Your Bliss is what that's called. Your Touch Your Bliss. That's that song is called. stupid right. good. Yeah. If you guys haven't heard it, you got to hear it. Hmm. I'm going to look yeah, that up I, later. I'll send it to you, bro. Those, those. Thank you. They're, Thanks. We're one of the artists that inspired us. Also, Air France? Like next to Picture Plane. I forgot. It's Air France was one of our very biggest influences. Not to be confused also, with Air. France. We wanted to like take those influences like or that, Aeroplane. In Picture Plane and like um, My Bloody Valentine. We wanted to like make that and make like a rap version of that. You definitely kind of succeeded, dude. When that bass line comes in, after the um the part where you chop up the kind of like orchestral like violin part, when that bass line that bam kicks in, it's like holy shit. Uh one fan, uh personal yeah. friend of mine, uh Slow Swords in the chat, uh says Passion Breathing from DX. So good. Definitely my favorite. Thanks. I made that one all by myself. I'm really it, I really like that it, one. It has been really like interesting to favorite. hear the chlorine mist. Now we get to hear what was Dylan versus what was James or James and Dylan. Right. And there was, um, cause a lot of the time it was just like, you know, some tracks was just all James. Some tracks were just all me. And then gotcha. like maybe 50% was like uh, actual collaboration. Okay. Hmm. But, um, but I thought like, well, but it was all about like that. We actually sat down and talked to each other about like what we were trying to do. Sick. And also that, um, we were coming from the same place, I think. That we were, we had like really the same kind of influences. And we were both like really big music nerds that grew up with Napster, and we were just down right. all the kinds of music. Um, I like, love like, that. like um like a track like Perfect Skies. Oh uh, yeah, that was called James. Perfect Skies is beautiful. That yeah. and like Chutch. Yeah. Chutch got right. wrapped over to you. Right. That track was also all James. Are you serious? But how it basically worked, uh, yeah, those two tracks are both all James. Oh, and Near and, too? Uh, yeah, oh, there's so many good ones. Uh, Near was like, um, that was like a full collaboration. Well, how a track like Near works is how uh, we made it was that James would give me um, a sample that he had like chopped into different pieces. Oh, cool. And a couple loops and then maybe a drum pattern. Mm -hmm. And then I would sit there and make the arrangement and add the synths and do oh. the mix. And, you guys um, do a lot of like hard hand hand looping. Hand it's cool. Drum stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. If anyone yeah, in the did chat, a lot of like uh, micro looping. You did. Take if anyone in the sense. chat is a huge Death Dynamic Shroud fan and hasn't heard Friend Zone, you got to check it out. There's a I don't know if you've heard yes. of. There's a group in the vaporwave community that's kind of big. They're called Death Dynamic Shroud, and they do a lot of that just like obsessive looping. Um, yeah, Chris has got their shirt. Um, Death Dynamic Shroud does a lot of that like micro looping, I believe I like is what it. you just said. It's like an Evangelion design. I mean, yeah, right? Like yeah. yeah. Another but question. Yeah, the, I think uh, micro looping is really interesting because you can, um, you can, because at that point is you're not worried about copyright violations or whatever. Or like people. Good point. The sample. Good point. That's kind of one of those like clouds that's always hanging time. over people's heads. Right. Like it's like when we made Fashion Killer, uh, and we submitted to the like it was like on RCA or whatever big major mm -hmm. label. So mm -hmm. I told them that we sampled the Dream. Yeah. But looking back on it, we didn't even like like the Dream now gets like a quarter of the money. <laughs> right. But you didn't like, even need to do it, maybe. It, we didn't really even need to tell them. Yeah, that's right? funny. If we're only wow. sampling one at a time. Like a computer can't even detect that. That's the right you sample. Because not only did we 
only sample one at a time, but we also like reversing stuff and we changing the pitch. Really the burying those samples. And so all we're using is the texture. It's like using like a Mellotron. Are you really doing a, like a copyright violation if you're using a Mellotron where mm. they, they recorded an orchestra on a cassette tape and you put it on a keyboard? No. It's like, are you, Good point. Are you like, do you need to pay royalties to the guy who invented the piano if you're like playing a piano? Mm -hmm. You're using the sounds that right. you created. Like, no. It's, to create... At that point, it's just an instrument. Yeah. It's just an instrument at that point. It's just, yeah, it's what you just said. Right. It's the textures to create a, a, a new idea. Right, and that's why I think that nobody's ever come uh, after us for a copyright. Violation. That's good. Even though we sampled tons of stuff, mm -hmm. nobody had ever come after us. That's and good, man. I think it's because the vast majority of the samples that we're using are unrecognizable. Really? Mm. Oh, shit. Ugh, we lost you, and now you are uh -oh. in my TV screen, and I'm uh -oh. in Skeleton I'm not Lake. Missed. Yeah. Um, what happened to your camera, bro? Just a second. Yeah, all good. You get to see what it's like to be young Shiro for a minute. Um, I have a question for you while you're uh, while you're tinkering, bro. Um, do you believe in guilty pleasures? And if so, even if you do or you don't, do you have a guilty pleasure? Like a musical guilty pleasure? Um, wait, you can you still hear me? I can. We, I think. Yeah, we, we can hear we can, you. We just gotta yeah. flick the. Yeah, we just. Uh, we're all on the wrong screens now. Oh, oh, here we go. I'm back. Yes, you are all back. Right, so, are you, like, guilty yeah, do you believe in guilty pleasures? You no, know, I don't believe in guilty pleasures. I think that if you like... You should guilty, own it, right? It's good. All right. I, period. I can't even think of something that I'm ashamed of. I was going to say, is there anything why, that you're really into that you, would I? people wouldn't expect you to be into? Um, What's your musical kink, bro? <laughs> it's funny. Um, I, I gotta follow I up to that. Um, okay. nope, I can't think of anything. Uh, it'll Ooh, come to you. Like, do you believe in liking something ironically? Uh oh. Well, well, that's. I could see that. Like, I um. That just means you really like it and haven't admitted I, it yet. I used to listen to like '90s, '90s like um hits. Yeah, I, I, I like oh to boy. listen to Lux um, is gonna love like you. Third Eye Blind, I like Third Eye Blind. Yeah, okay. oh, Third Eye Blind. I, you know what? I'll, I'll listen. I'll unironically listen to a few Third Eye Blind songs. I might put on Graduate. I don't know. <laughs> you, you, they're like fun to sing along to in the car. I I like really passionate songs. I'm really, but it, I can't say I'm really ashamed of it. You right? Know, like, Not I, really. I like Good. to uh, find like stupid um, old educational videos and soundtracks for those, and like I'm a big fan of like there's like this one uh, Scruff McGruff. Yeah, uh, Chicago, album. Illinois. Yeah, he, he's six zero six five two. Uh, there's a uh, he has like a, a album from the, he has as if he's as if he's a real person. Right. Uh, has an album yeah, of like uh, anti of anti drug songs. And uh, I listen to it pretty frequently. It's pretty funny. <laughs> using crack and cocaine to get high. That's what you say you love. Do, do, do. It's like, and I listen to that pretty frequently, particularly when people are in the car. Dude, like, I'll just put it on. And I like, I, I like it. And I'm like, this is, yeah, I like Bob into it. But you like, should drop yeah, it into man, a I DJ just... set. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that because that's mean to do to the audience. <laughs> you're, right. <laughs> like, you're right. You don't do that. That's like you don't just play what you want to play if you're like a DJ. It yeah, was a joke. Like... So there's actually some late 80s, actually, early if 90s. I did remix it. That's too much. That's too much work. For you a should. Joke. Like I'm not going to remix it. Like that. Remix like that time actually. I would spend doing that. Like I'd actually put together something I will care about. Like there was this one time. <laughs> like there was this one time. Um, I remember. Um, you know, there was that feud that was going on between some future funk artists and the Knox because, like, the Knox were fucking jealous of Young Bay because he oh, gave yeah. their slots at them on tours. So, like, they, like, made some fucking dumbass statement about future funk. And, like, I was, like, I was, like, like, ironically do, like, a future funk album that just sampled all their songs. And then I was, like, this is Oh, that would have been great. Ooh. No, it would have been great. But I was, like, that's a lot of work for a prank. Like, I'm not doing that. I have to do one. do with my time. <laughs> what? You should do like one, one track. Yeah, you can do one. Mesh no. would do it. No. Well, he then says. he can do it. There we go. Someone else can do it. Perfect. Yeah, but like, I don't have that much. Great. I, yeah, it's like 
you know, you ever get that idea like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. It'll be, it'll be funny. It'll be really fun. And then you're like, it's a lot of work. I'm like, I could use this energy right. to do a lot of other things. You know, something that's actually that not look, ironically there. You know, as an artist, you really have to like figure out where you're gonna put your time and energy, right? Sometimes, like particularly like, you know, a lot of people sometimes want a piece of you for one reason or another. And it's just sometimes you got to be like, oh, I really would like to do something with you. But, man, I'm just tired and I, I have so many other things I have to do. And it's mm -hmm. not personal. It's just that I don't have time. Like, I can't imagine some of the other art. Like, I, this happens to me pretty, free, pretty frequently. But there are, like, a lot of artists who I'm sure happen to it a lot, you know, in the scene that they, you know, there's a lot of stuff they want to do. There's a lot of stuff they're asked to do. There's a lot of stuff they would like to do. But they can't because their energy is so limited. You know what I mean? Right. And, like, Right. And whether it be a remix or a collab or a live stream or a show or anything like and they like you know people ask them and they have to be like listen i i i, I can't and it's not anything to do with you and it's not have anything to do with who i think i am or whatever but right it just takes a lot of work <laughs> well you're kind of a man of the people i mean i've seen you work with everybody and it's really so, hard and like yeah for everybody you see me work with like stretch armstrong I get pulled in a lot of different directions, <laughs> and that's just here. Like, let's not even get to my day job right. as a surgeon. Oh, like, let's not even go there, or like my personal life, or all that stuff too. You know, you it's look hard. like a surgeon. Oh, I do. He looks like a surgeon. How, <laughs> how fun! I love it when I you post got, pictures like, in your garb. I'm like, like, wow. I'm covered in tattoos and shit too. Oh, how fun! I love that. I actually like. Wait, are you really a surgeon? Yeah, <laughs> I am. You really? Yeah. I, you don't actually look like a surgeon. I was. Surgeon. Oh, that was a joke. That's oh, I actually. You really are a surgeon, Isaac. He helped yeah. Um. Hey. Surgeon. So it wouldn't be violating uh, It wouldn't be violating HIPAA to mention <laughs> that you uh, worked. No, I don't think you worked with him. You talked to the guy from The Locust. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. You didn't do work on him, Pearson. but you, you. Yeah, Justin Pearson. I want to say there was a little dialogue about that. I didn't do surgery on Justin Pearson. I just like I, I so I used to like, I, I this kinda, is how rumors start. I used Sorry. to play in like scrams bands and stuff when I was young, and uh, I, I kind of know him a little bit, and I do say hi to him when he's in Philadelphia. That's and I got to know him a little bit better one day, and uh, he told me I told him I was playing Headwood City album in the OR in the OR one time, and he's like, "That's so fun." Good album. It's yeah, a good album, right? It's a little, I remember yeah. his that band was really. Sick. That was like the first time I really. Yeah, they had the actually, guys like, from I don't Blood wanna, Brothers. Like, that's like the. Yeah, the and, yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, jinx, Jinx, Jinx. That was like the first time the I like, really Brothers. talked to him. Yeah, Blood Brothers. That's an interesting band. Bro, I got to see that Blood Brothers awesome live band. during the Young that Machetes tour. Band. Love that Blood Brothers. They were the best band. Bro, I they were the fucking love band. Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers Lux great. hates well, them. I mean, it's I hilarious. Love, oh, really? Fantastic. Lux oh, hates I Blood Brothers. Brothers. So I, I'm a big... I, you know, like God. Uh, me, Burn I Piano love, Island, I Burn came on Shuffle today. Like, yeah, dude. Awesome album. It's a great Hell yeah, album. Bro. So like, that's like, that was what I was into when I was in, when I was younger, when I was in <laughs> high school. I was very much into like, I guess you would call it scrams today. You called it something different back then. Uh, but obviously, I was very into like things like Orchid and Reversal of Man and Page 99 and uh, Neil Perry and uh, Yafet Kodo and uh, a lot of bands off Gravity Records or a lot of bands off Ebullition Records or Level Plane Records like uh, Seisha, you and I, all these. And Blood Brothers was in like, the lineage of that, basically. Blood like Brothers is like... Hardcore, metalcore. Theme. I don't want to call it metalcore. Right. It's, call we it call it scrams nowadays, but you right. used to call it screamo, but then screamo... what they call it? Screamo like Circle crams. Takes the Square Scrams. and all those guys. Circle, oh, I love Circle Takes the Square. Me Absolutely. too, I just barely so, missed seeing him live when I was an undergrad and I'm still mad uh, about love it. it. I, yeah, man, um, I Mean, they played a uh, house uh, yeah, show in Abilene, modern. Texas. I'll, I'll put Combat Wounded Veteran in that category. I'll put like a lot of stuff in that Holy category. Molar you, you, Holy Molar and Converse. Holy is great. Bucket full of teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have. Um, I'm big into those bands. Uh, you know, uh, off minor. I could go on for hours. It's not worth it. But anyway, it was like you used to call <laughs> it Screamo it. back then. But City then like then they started calling Scream City of Caterpillar. Yeah, that's another page ninety nine um, uh, side project. Um, they used to call it screamo back then even though you wouldn't really call it that it was something different yeah i always feel a little bad whenever you know, i call it that screamo went on be called, went on to become something different that i don't agree with like under oath uh, and shit that's, so that's what uh, i don't want i'm sure lots of people like that that's i like under oath i don't want to listen 
And that's Under fine. Oak, I understand. I would say it's definitely metalcore. That's yeah. So, I don't they, know. They, like you can call that metalcore. I don't All know right, what's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. They like are the definition well, of metalcore. Uh, well, okay. So even even when I think of metalcore, like I also almost think of like a '90s version of that, like Converge or Coalesce, or um, you know. Converge uh, is such a sick band. I love Converge. Still I love, love Converge. Converge. Yeah. And so I I Jane usually Doe, think of, awesome album. Oh, for sure. I actually like um, uh, petitioning the Empty Sky, which is I believe the the first big album by them is ex exceptionally good, and I highly recommend it. Um, and then I think Forever Came Crashing was after that, and then it's Jane Doe. And uh, I, you know what? We're not gonna, I'm not gonna just sit here listening to Converge albums anyway. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I was I love that stuff. Um, Really uh, or man. even like Earth Crisis and stuff like that, which is like like like, which in my opinion is very oh, much that what was I like would call. Thrash metal. Well, I would, yeah, I always can. That's like thrash. Thrash feels like, you know, that's like from the like Metallica era. So, it's like mid '90s. I consider it metalcore. A thrash stuff I usually think of when I think of a thrashcore band, um, or something that's like thrashcore. I, I'm thinking of a more recent band. I think of something like Nails, or um, or even something like Tragedy, um, which is like. D beat combined with uh, metal and thrash and what are we? Well, what, I mean, but what, thrash what? was originally was Metallica, Megadeth. Yeah, and or like um, what's it called? Um, fucking Motorhead and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like when well, they had yeah, that. Yeah, they were influenced by stuff like Motorhead and uh, mm -hmm. Merciful Fate. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you call okay. stuff like Genghis Tron or like Horse the Band? What do you call that stuff? Oh, I think those you remember those guys? Unique. Well, I mean, yes. they do come from the screamo metalcore scene. Yeah, I want to say it was like but late two thousands. Experimental at that time. I never listened they to them. You never listened to Genghis Tron, Chris? No, I, think I never listened to them. And I never listened to the band. band. I don't know them are very both well. Both like screamo metalcore bands that have like Casio synths and stuff. Yeah, going on. yeah. This isn't like we're not like talking like Attack Attack or something, are we? Horse the band was really bad with like the kind of chip tune esque. Like, like imagine the stuff, right? Imagine Anamanaguchi like, well, with look, screaming. I don't know. <laughs> Would I like this? Uh, you'd probably I like think... Genghis Tron. I don't think you'd I... like Horse the Beast. All right. I don't know. I, I heard really people, cool. a lot of people really. I've met a lot of people. Who you do like, surprise me. Like their favorite band. I've met a lot of people who tell me like Horse of the Band is like their favorite band, and really? I just never check them out. Do, uh, do you like lot, music like that's a big cult following? Do you like music that's kind of sort of funny, like kind of humorous? Or do you need your music uh, a little more serious? Like, uh, no, I don't know. I don't, not, don't know. I'm, no, right. I don't. I, I like all the stuff. So, I mean, I'm not I'm sure. I'm so jealous of you, Reese. He got to see Gangster Strong. And with, what? Um, Casio solo. But like, we don't, every, like, I don't. I need to know how we're defining metalcore first, and like which band. So like Zayo, Norma Jean. Jean. I mean, by that, I mean like the genre that like Bill Norma Jean, Jean combined Brothers. with something. Yeah, yeah, like punk rock oh, okay. influenced well, metal. Uh, oh. All right, okay. Yeah. If you're going to combine you Blood Brothers with anything, I'm board. into it. Right. I don't know. Hey, you just just name the band. If you said Blood Brothers combined with this, I'm, I'm, I'm My done. only That's beef fine. with you Blood Brothers is they're very late 2000s, like MySpace wave, when everything was like kind of... I mean, I still like them a lot. I still yeah, like them a lot. Just their, saying. They came, they came up in like 2001, 2002. I don't know. Uh huh. Right. Uh, yeah, everyone was. Everyone had this haircut. You will. Everybody yeah. was trying to look like. Re everyone was kid. trying to look like. Re everyone was trying to look like refused. They're basically, their hair. they were doing a bad yeah. job at it. They're trying to look like refused, but it was like a cartoon version of refused. Oh, but, true. I mean, some of them are good at it. They look pretty. Speaking good. of that, and the haircut was pretty appealing. Also, speaking of that, that now there's an <laughs> album, "The Shape of Punk to Come" by Refused. Oh boy, y'all right. get ready to get something. That that one. That's always a thing. That's that never so, gets old for me. What's what's your favorite track? Cause mine's the Deadly Rhythm. Oh, that's my favorite too. Are you serious? No way. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Song. We didn't even call each other. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But uh, anyway, um, what else do we want to talk about? We've been kind of just naming bands. I got a good what one. What else we were talking about? What is the weirdest music that you fuck Get with? Get your white belts. That's fucking funny, <laughs> Pacific Plaza. <laughs> I love that. What did you say? Get your white belts, fam. I put on a white belt. What is what is the weirdest music oh, yeah, that, that you listen to? Yeah, what's the weirdest music that you listen to, man? I guess it depends on what you define as like. Weird. What, do you, what do you define as weird? And what do you yeah. think yourself personally is the weirdest music you listen to? And we'll tell you if we think it's weird or not. Um, it doesn't have to be the weirdest. Something weird. Something that you listen I, to, you're like, man, this is weird. I don't know if other people like this. I like, 
I like a lot of prog rock. I like Yes. The band yes. Love Yes. They're really good. They have their album Close to the Edge. Yes. Battle, Tales from Dover Down by the corner. That is one of my favorite bands. I listened to that. I when I first started doing mushrooms in acid when I was <laughs> just out of high school, I like started like I would just put on Close to the Edge by Yes and I would just listen to the entire album. Oh, that's just fun. Sit down, just close my eyes. And it's I would have fun. parties where I would just get we would all go on to get do mushrooms and we'd all just listen to this and it, Oh how fun. And it would never fail to blow every single person's mind. It was really inspiring you to like actually oh, we should all like I could do something awesome. Dude. Oh yeah, dude. Like, Some of those no, synth solos no are just boundaries. You can do anything. How fun. Take it as far as you want. Wow. As the further you take it, the more epic it will be. I... Like... Right. Wow. Beautiful. What a fun vibe. I, mean, I don't know if that's weird. No, that that's no, it? it's it's odd. I'd say that it's odd. Like people wouldn't expect you to be putting on that oh, yes yeah. album like that. I think that was a that's a great example. That was perfect. And the, they're like, have you guys seen the movie Akira? Yes! Yeah, of course. Absolutely. It's man. amazing. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. The soundtrack, soundtrack to that by Gino, Gino Yamashiro, Yamashiro Gui, whatever that guy. That album is amazing. It's like a combination of all these different kinds of like, um, like traditional music from all over Asia. Mm -hmm. and But then also combined with like prog rock and like. Mm. It's uh, one of the most unique things I've ever heard, and it was like a hundred people were involved in like, recording that album. Oh man, that's amazing! I didn't know that. The marimba in some of those songs is just right. Chef's yeah, kiss. So <clears throat> surreal. It's unbelievable that like this was even made. But mm. I guess that was. <clears throat> I think it was like I think that Japan in the early '90s was like America in the '70s, where um, for some reason, the people that were like funding stuff were they were really trying to make like prestige, like high art stuff. Like how like when they tried to make Dune, the movie, they oh, like, yeah. they like well, we're we're gonna like respond to Star Wars by hiring Alejandro Jodorowsky, the guy who made oh, the Holy yeah. Mountain. Did you watch that? Right. That can make their star wars now you it's you like you, hours long. you watch do the soundtrack you watch the uh documentary right right it's so good yeah, like, like dune. Salvador Dali Joe was like dune. yeah jodorowsky's dune he yeah. won that's uh that's amazing i mean i i know and then love jodorowsky they dropped that and then they hired the guy who made a racer head to make dune yeah david lynch yeah. that's like oh, how no. things were in the 70s oh know, yeah like early 80s i know i know like they Are you not really a Lynch fan, Dylan? High art, and there was a lot of money being invented, invested in it. I am a huge Lynch fan, but it's just it's that. Think about it. That would never happen now. They trade directors they all the time hire, back then. They would not hire the guy who made a razor head to make their <laughs> Star Wars movie. That like would not happen. You know what? Today. But what's interesting is like I never would have thought that the guy who made Dead Alive would make the Lord of the Rings movies either, right? Oh no, that's shit! True. That's such a weird. <laughs> like I never really thought the guy who did yeah. Meet the Feebles was going to direct that. I also never yeah, really thought scary. that the guy who made Evil Dead would do a Spider-Man movie. Right. Dude, good. You point, never dude. know. Some of these people are very no. multifaceted. You no. Know? Right, but they, it seems like they they were. But today I guess it's getting less and less, though. You're right. Today, yeah, today, like you, years you, ago. you know what? You're right. Today, especially today, because, like, now it's like the people. Is no. That. Well, you know, mm -hmm. like if it's not a pre-established like franchise, it's not getting made now. Mm -mm. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Well, it's That's it's getting put on like, TV or Netflix. Well, it's getting. It's yeah, not I mean, getting it's put in theaters. Well, even. Well, you know, even there, like, I have to agree with, with, you, with Dylan saying that, like, there's a lot less creativity going on in, like, the visual oh, yeah, media world. Right. Because, like, everything now, if I have to fucking turn my fucking streaming service on and see one more fucking Marvel or Star Wars property get turned into another show okay. or another movie, I'm going to fucking yeah. scream. Like, I can't. I won't watch them anymore. I don't care. And I grew up reading yeah. comics. And I grew up. The P I, I have a whole stack of fucking comics that I was reading all I the time that, when bro. I was a kid. 
and like I it's am like, gonna scream to their, if I have to look at one more of these fucking movies. Like I just tired of it, man. What like, happened to their confidence in real art that's innovative? Can what somebody happened? make some new fucking Too mythology risky. up? Like, you know what's crazy? It's like when I go on Instagram and I look at different like fashion designer Instagrams and I see these beautiful things, these headpieces and necklaces and like strange costumes that people are making all the time just for images and photography and like cool shit, like high art fashion. I'm like, why can't you make a movie no around shit, this sort of, right? so, sort of world, right? Like I see stuff all the time where people yeah. make these like masks, these skull masks that have like yeah. pearls and necklace and like armor and it's like beautiful. And I'm like, wow. And now I gotta go fucking watch this shit again. Why aren't like, the people that write JRPG storylines writing Somebody write a film movie scripts. based on some of the amazing shit that I keep seeing on yeah. Instagram every fucking day I start looking around. Like, and no, yeah. no, 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 here's another Fantastic Four movie. Oh my but God, there's a go little fuck bit yourself. I start, there's you a little to, like, bit of it. it out. You do, but like- Like, like Nicholas Winding Refn, he makes Oh God, I love him, absolutely, he's great. You do have to search yeah. it out, but it's so few and far between, right? It's very <laughs> hard. <laughs> It's at a point where it almost does not exist. Oh, it's so almost. ridiculous. I can't believe I like turned on like like Disney Plus one day and they're like, here's 15 new Marvel property TV shows. And I'm like, oh my God, can I just fucking take it's my like jewel so and stick down. it down it's my like throat? They don't, they don't think that we can handle anything new. <clears throat> just give me some new Basically. fucking mythology. Like, give me some opinions. Make something different. You were telling I'm me so about a streaming Star service Wars. that you I'm have so that's like a library, Marvel. isn't it? What's that called again? Oh, um, Canopy? Canopy. I need to get that. You well, told Canopy me about it that like one the, day. So Canopy is like the library streaming service, basically. So it's got like a lot of stuff on it and a lot of obscure art films on it. All you really need to sign up for it is a library card. But like, it depends on what library you're subscribed to. It's like I I got library cards at three different libraries because like yeah. you get a certain amount of plays per month. So like for like my New Jersey library, I get ten plays. For my Philadelphia library, I get like six plays. So I have like sixteen plays. Yes. combined and what? it re-ups re every month like but if you you can only use it wait, like 16 times like, wait you're saying you can only listen 16 times well, well watch it's it's watch so it's like all the it's like the the, the national library oh, archives like um like streaming service films? yeah like all kinds of obscure films on it all kinds of oh, amazing work. Probably. I mean, I, I guess it's reasonable to watch a movie like 16 times. That's about as many times. As well, right. I mean, it's but like you can watch. You can music, read 16 that would be an absurd restriction. Oh, that, that would be absurd. This is for films. This is like the library's okay. collection of films. It's a streaming service by the National Library, right? So to, to access that. it, it doesn't cost anything. You just have to have a library card. And then you input your library card into the website. And then it it loads you up with however many plays the library that like library a allows you. Website? It's a, I don't it's know. Like a, you just go to canopy.com or whatever. Libraries are part of the government. Oh, Canopy with a K. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the K. thanks for linking, exactly. Lux. Thanks, Sounds Lux. like socialism. Um, so, like, then every, yeah, you don't pay anything for it. You just, like, get a library card, and then they give you a certain amount of plays. And it re and once you use those plays for that month, you're kind of done until the next month happens, and then you get more plays. But you can have as many library cards as you like, you know. Like, I have two loaded on there, so I have, like, 16... I can watch 16 different movies a month, basically, on it. God, I need that. Right. Question for you, Dylan? It used to be that you could just torrent stuff, but it's it's becoming less and less It is available. becoming less and less available, yeah. yeah. If you want to get your ISP up your ass. Stuff. Yeah, I and mean, like, they'll send you a letter. I got a question for you. We, you uh, we talked about Ask guilty pleasures. Way. We talked about weird music. Are there any acts that you want to shout out that you can guarantee that we've never heard of because yes excellent choice anything you think you can kind of stump us with um you, you might have heard of it have you heard of yule yes yule's amazing Yule. Oh, Yule. She was at she, Econ. Yule. Y, y, y E U L E, right? Yeah. Yule. Yule was great. The, 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 the Asian, the Asian artist. Yeah, she played at Electron Con too. Oh yeah, we we a big fan of Yule for sure. Since like her first album, actually. But she yeah, is, she also she's played at Electron Con too. Amazing. We her music Yule. is Absolutely. so sad. Yeah, I love it. Yule. I like um I, I was back yeah, she's amazing. I was like backstage with her electronic on too and I I was like trying to figure out something cool to say to her to impress her. Right. <laughs> all I could all all I could think of was um, yeah. hey, did you know we can smoke our jewels back here? And she's like, <laughs> Oh great and I was like 
Yeah, that's it. I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> I wish I'd said something cool. Wow, like, you I stunk I, Skelly. I, I wish I'd said something cool it to you. intimidating. <laughs> I didn't know what to she's say. She's so cool. She's super cool. And uh, like, all I did she's talk, but deep, she had a jewel. Bro. She, I saw, I saw her holding her jewel, and I was like, yeah, we can smoke these back here. Oh they won't care. God. And she's like, thank you. You're so great. I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I had more to say. <laughs> Lux just said, did you know she's you could so smoke nice. your Yules back here? Oh, my God. That's fucking funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's so good. When I, when I saw her live, I was so blown away. She she played all her own instruments. Mm -hmm. Like She like had like Very a skilled. Oh she was like playing live, and she was had a push, and she was like triggering her like clips and stuff. And then... Oh, and amazing. then by the end of her set, she like started breaking down, like crying, and then she like hid behind her. I love that. System, that doesn't surprise me at all. And and I just went up to her and I just like that was really beautiful. Like thank you. And she's and a huge she's Final Fantasy, Fantasy fan. Oh. Yeah. That's true. God. But she's so fucking amazing. I, but I guess I didn't stump you guys. No, Sorry. but but that's okay. That's one thing about the vaporwave scene that Chris and I are always like super proud of is that everyone in the scene basically has all these other different scenes or like movements or like backgrounds that all kind of blend together, and that's low key why we have this show so we can geek out about Yule and Yes and Ariel mm -hmm. Pink or whatever you know, Blood and Brothers friend zone, and, and, yeah. and Friend Zone. <laughs> yeah, and Friend Zone. And Friend Zone. Honestly, you guys were mentioning a lot of uh, hip hop artists that like I was like only a little bit familiar. I, I didn't know a lot about that scene. And I actually learned a lot today from listening to you guys talk. Like I didn't know how to organize all those artists previously. So, I was aware of them and I listened to them, but I didn't know how they were all connected to each other or where they all came from um, until I heard you guys kind of talk a lot. And honestly, bro, a lot. friend zone. That really put a lot. That really put a lot of things into perspective for me about how that scene kind of came to fruition and that I did I wasn't aware of. You got to uh, check I out. I learned something. Friend zone. I'm very excited. You I gotta did. Check I out was stumped. Supreme so I cuts. Was stumped. Like quick. Yeah. You got to check out Magic Fades if you're not already a fan. Oh and yes. You got to check course. out Dingus, I mean, man. Eric Dingus. I got that. Eric Dingus is the one I really need to check out because that's someone I'm oh, aware of but have not Holy listened shit. to. I'm going to going to definitely. Well, I'm gonna go back and like watch this episode and just kind of write a few things down actually. <laughs> so it's fine. Like very, it's dark, he's like dude. Very, he's almost like. Nice. He's like a claims casino. He like makes he makes stuff that really uh, like trans casino. like it could be on a. Uh, you would love it, could it Chris. Be on um. I do. A major label like, record. I do. I do. Well, I love. I do I, love Clams Casino, despite the fact that it does make me a little sad because it reminds what? me of you know, somebody. So anyway. It's also uh, really sad sounding it. sometimes, you know. Yes. Yeah, but that's like the beauty of music. Yeah, dude, it really is. You can have all kinds of. Well, although it's interesting, I think that music that it it's like um, it's like a prism, or where you can from whatever direction you're looking at it from, it's different, mm. and different people like hear. I I feel like that with my music, where I yeah. feel like this music is really happy, yeah. but then ever other people Very tell true. me it sounds like tragic. We were just yeah. talking about that with Fire yeah. Tools on the last episode about the song that's actually playing right now, but you guys can't hear it. Return to Heaven Accepted is a pitched down song, and the original song is very like happy and kind of transcendent sounding, but Angel was telling us that there's this weird phenomenon where when you pitch that down, it kind of makes it sound really sad. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's hard to explain right. until you hear it, but you probably know because you make music. I mean, that's how chopping and screwing, like, it, that, I guess that is how it works, I guess. But I, I think that it, the most important thing is that it actually, most of this stuff, it doesn't actually, it doesn't fit into, like, simple categories, like happy, sad. True. It's the most interesting music, it is in it, it evokes an emotion that you can't describe. Yeah. There's yes, not sir. a word for it. That's a yes, beautiful sir. way of putting it. Absolutely. That's and, um, and I would say that that encompasses most emotions, I would say. Mm -hmm. Most emotions aren't just happy or sad. No. Usually you feel like a more complex emotion. Well, like your song yeah. from Collection and, One, Major, all sounds a little sad, right. but it's also very, very like frenetic sounding. It's almost like um, Mutant Standard from Garden of Delete, but like a little bit more, right. a little less chaotic. That's an awesome album. 
It is. It is. Um, but you're right. right. It's very, like, one moment sounds kind of sad, one moment sounds kind of, you know, jittery sounding, I guess. And that, I don't know. Right. That's, like, the most interesting music, I think, is that it, where it <laughs> explores a whole glut of emotions, and none of them are easily... You can't really put a finger on what the emotion is. Right. And then, like, stuff where, like, it's, like, really... Oh, that reminds me that another artist that was really influential for me. Who? Was, um, Boredom. You guys know about Boredom? Oh, yeah. Japanese yeah. Boredom. Amazing, of course. Yeah, like, they had the album. Uh, I really like their album, the Super AE, and then their album, uh, Vision Creation, New Sun, and uh, Sea Drum, House of Sun. Those three albums are, like... I, I saw them live in L.A. at the... Um, La Brea Tar Pits. They oh, had the wow. 88 oh, drummers nice. surrounding, like, and he had like a. a there are 88 drummers. What? Yeah, there was 88 drummers. Wait, it was what? called 88 Boa Drum. Oh right. God. It was like every drummer in LA oh basically God. came together for this like event. Unbelievable. So Reese they, was there too. He says. The stage. Right. Yeah. Sick. And um. Yeah, I saw him there. Uh, it was oh, how up. fun! <laughs> and he had how like fun. this xylophone or like where he was hitting these all these different guitar necks that were tuned to different chords and he was like hitting them with mallets and um eric was where like was so in front of you guys such an amazing event right eric where was there That's true. <laughs> oh man i love that that's oh, too fun. cool right. well, well, i've never been to that venue to eric where oh man I, no, the La Brea I hope he didn't stand in front of like, you that man is tall like a museum yeah. Yeah, he is huge. But no, it's not it's not a venue. It's like um It's a museum. It's like a there's like a museum there for like dinosaur bones. Yeah, because the there's tar, tar pits. Is, like, like, yeah, like I've been to Lacma and shit, but I've never been to the Labre tar pits. Right, and that's like where they had the show. It was like Oh, cool. that's so sick, dude. You should check it out. It's cool. I'm gonna have yeah. to at some point. Uh how many hours of music do you think you listen to per day, bro? I mean, it obviously depends on the day. Yeah, that's but true. Average it out over a week, maybe. I would say, like, well, six, seven that seems hours. Me too, bro. Yeah. Music yeah, constantly. Sure. Constantly. Uh -huh. There's never yeah. a moment there's not music on. I love it. Oh, you so need it to keep yourself to inspired. Yeah, that's exactly right. I listen to music and so you much. need it to keep yourself, like, on the cutting edge. Of that. Uh, it's always yeah, so weird whenever I meet too. people that, like, don't like music. Me too. It's so strange to me. I mean, I get that they like other things, but... Yeah. Hmm. I respect it. I don't understand it. That's like hmm. a core cool part of being a human being. Yeah, it's like... It's, yeah. To connect with music. It's yeah, very bizarre when someone doesn't like music. I know it's, I, or they're like, in, are you a human being? Yeah, like, or they're... They in, seem like they must be reptiles. <laughs> right. <laughs> are they lizards? Like, they're in... <laughs> Like, there are, why are they indifferent to it? It's like music is on, and it's not even like they outwardly hate it. It's just that they barely even like notice it. you don't it. drink water. It's like some <laughs> yeah, people are like, I yeah. don't like water. Yeah. This is so strange to me because it's like one of those great pleasures in life, and it really doesn't even cost anything anymore, and they're just right. not interested in checking it out. It's so strange. Like, sometimes it's like they, yeah. they'll, like, if it's on, they will they won't mind it. They're not going to turn it off, but they're certainly not going to seek it themselves. It's like, like, don't you care about... Like beauty, don't you want beauty in your life? They probably don't. But I guess, I guess maybe some people don't care about stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they they just maybe math is more important to them, or <laughs> right, like people who don't really fuck them. with art. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> but music is just so it's like yeah, it's one of the great pleasures of life, and it like it doesn't even cost anything. <laughs> like for the most part, like you put on like a streaming service right. or SoundCloud or whatever, like you find something that maybe moves you. It's like so much like to buy food like you don't even have to do that with music really? do you guys have a you know, preferred method are you more headphones guys or do you like like speakers do you have a you system to buy music you oh. should support music buy the albums oh yeah, yeah. absolutely that's you know a, what i mean like that goes you without saying it. but once you have it you can listen like let's say you buy the record you can listen to it all the time now if you buy food right. you can eat it once it's gone that's what i mean when i say that <laughs> like don't like you know that's why i feel true. that you can sample it. You can sample but it, man. You can yeah, micro sample it and create a texture. Right, the micro loops. Yeah. Are you guys more like micro headphone music listeners or more like speakers systems um, over the air? 
I definitely prefer speak, speakers. Speaker system. Same. For, I have them. Speaker system for me. I but I it's think like, you know both make sense to me. Like I can totally get the headphone thing as I well. Are both nice, are right. But speakers, I would say it sounds better. I agree. Because yeah. you have the two sides mixing together. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, just like you don't have to deal with this thing on your head. Yeah. And, well, I mean, using headphones is a different experience. I would say you're actually like yeah. listening like with a microscope with headphones. Oh, what a great metaphor. Important. Oh, I'm going right. to steal that one, my friend. I'll credit you, though. It's, it's like, like listening. It's like, the fine detail. It's like a microscope. Yeah. Everything listening to out. music in a microscope. Which, that's a great way right. to that's a great metaphor to describe it i think right wow. but i think Perfect. that one of the most important things when you're listening to music almost all music is when you play it on speakers you can feel it in your body because right. the vibrations are moving yeah. throughout the room you don't oh, have right. that with headphones mm, you, you can feel it. feel it in your body i guess like the music introspective when you put it in through the uh, headphones right like you you, you have to oh well, yeah maybe think about it a lot more and you have to have that good move. quality lossless you audio when you're visceral. doing headphones it's visceral when you're like systems the speakers true i mean i'm a speaker guy too i like that too because then i can move right. around but you're right you can feel it in your body more with the speakers i don't know maybe it's more in your head when it's in the headphones that's two different experiences there's nothing like the like when you go to a club and they're playing music really loud yeah. and you can really feel like the bass yeah. like through your whole body and it's crazy. like rumbling like an earthquake it's crazy that is crazy it's a fucking amazing feeling dude that you will never I miss get it with so headphones. bad true you'll never come close to that with headphones yeah that pounding I mean, four on the, the floor bass you get is just playing it really loud and that would just make you deaf but <laughs> it's still, you still won't feel it through your whole body although they have that thing this sub pack have you heard about the sub pack? Mm -mm. It's like a thing they, they have like a thing they put on your chair. It's like a thing you strap to your chair and it like vibrates. Uh -huh. You can like listen to music. Ooh. I don't and know. It's not good without bothering your neighbors. On your back. That's definitely not going to be the right. same. All right, wait. It, it's getting kind of well, late. Yeah, we gotta, it's not the same, but it's good. But it's not, but you know what? I'll tr I'll take it. You know, I'll take what I can get. Right. Oh wait. What do we have any questions? I mean, if you have to listen with headphones. Yeah. yeah chat. Sound out with any questions. It, I know. We, it's getting to be late. My uh, my good friend who was not here for the beginning half is a huge Metallica fan, and he says just now that music peaked when "And Justice for All" came out. Thoughts? That was a pretty sick album. <laughs> I told him he missed out because well, you mean, had that whole session. I don't know if music peaked then. Although that is an underrated album, I think that everyone loves Master of Puppets, but "And Justice for All" is a really fucking sick album. But what about the Smashing Pumpkins? They came out after that, and they are like even <laughs> sicker than Metallica. They, like, a little, little Billy Corgan the Siamese for you. Dream the Smashing Pumpkins. Oh yeah, man, absolutely. Love like I, the, probably music peaked when that came out. It's like the best album I've ever heard. <laughs> Siamese Dream. Or really? Oh, okay. I love Siamese Dream. Melancholy. I think that song's great. It's got everything going on in it. It's all. It's that uh, Butch Vig produced that Maybe. album. So Butch Vig produced right. that album, and he like just layered the fuck out of guitars when he when he produced it. That's what I was. You what know I heard. what they actually what they did is Tell they me. recorded the chords one string at a time. Uh, wow! Creates wow. a hexaphonic sound. That's it, laborious. It all the intermodulation distortion. How intermodulation cool. distortion. Wow. How fucking cool, dude! That's so cool. I fucking love that. How like, fun! I have a guitar right now that I just built this in the oh, last couple of years. Oh, holy fun. shit! This, um, this guitar has a um, hexaphonic pickup, which means that every string has a separate pickup. So okay. they go. So each string goes to its own distortion circuit. So there's like Whoa. six distortions. You can make some pedals. crazy so combos with that, string. huh? That and that way, so you can cool. create that Siamese dream sound what? in real time. In that real time. Record one that thing is at a time. That is a labor saving device. I have ever heard of. Well, that, right. well, look at that, man. What a, what a, um, what a, <laughs> wow. That was like a, that was a surprise. I did not see that in that coming. Wow. <laughs> wow, fun. I didn't, like, a, that was like a plot twist right there. I did not expect you to pull out a guitar that could do that. Fascinating. Uh, uh, 
I mean, that's what I've been doing for a couple of these last couple of years. It's just really fun building these things, and you can explore all these new textures because these are all sounds that you cannot create with a synth. Right. Wow. You cannot do that. This is all like just like magnetic sounds with the actual physical steel strings. Mm. You cannot recreate this with a synth. Man, not you know at what? All the same. I thought I was. You know what? Until you just showed me that just right now and that concept right there, like I thought I was like done playing my guitar. <laughs> like, but now I'm like, man, I, really, I think <laughs> right? I'm my guitar again right. now. That's, I, I was done with my guitar. I thought I was done my guitar. guitar. Like Pacific Plaza guitar. wants to know yeah. if you wound the pickup the yourself. Was boring. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I didn't wind it myself. It's made by this company called Sickfi, Psychfi, C Y C F I. They're from. See the Philippines, CFI. they're like the most innovative company making guitar electronics right now. They also made all these um, controllers on the guitar. This, they are basically real <laughs> guitar knobs, but they actually control MIDI, so I can control all of this equipment Bro. from the guitar. Let oh, me. Really I have you. Uh, I have you cropped. Yeah. Let me pan over super quick. Maybe people can see a little bit of that right. equipment you have there. Yeah. Oh, right. A I little bit of a rack control there. Control all this rack stuff. And, That's um, so wild, dude. I can assign dude. all the different knobs to different things, and um, and if you look closely, there instead of a regular quarter-inch jack, there's a multi-pin connector. It has 19 pins, so it sends all of that, um, all the different knobs, and all the different set. Well, there's six separate string pickups, and then there's also another pickup. It sends all seven separately to a breakout box, and I can send them all to all the different effects that I want and I have wow. like an Eventide H8000 right here so I can do different pitch shifting on every string. Whoa. That and, whoa. Um, Looking cool man. Wow. I <laughs> love it. Really? Oh my god. Um, I think it that... It the guitar <clears throat> as interesting as a synthesizer. I was, Dylan, I was just about to say I think you just made guitars seem really fucking cool to a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, all these vapor wavers sure. are about to start picking up guitar I again. think, like, uh, I didn't know if we were going to be able to reinvent rock music again and make it cool, but I don't know. I think maybe... Are you <laughs> maybe using we'll some get... of that on your upcoming album? If some people go in this direction um, like this, I think we could get guitars back again. Wow. I wasn't sure if that yeah. would happen. <laughs> There's a little bit on my new album, but I think the next thing after I do that is going to have be more uh, guitar based. Right. So I've just been spent the last couple of years like developing this and actually figuring, like actually building it, getting it to work. So I've, it's only actually please, uh, gotten it to really work in the last year. Dylan, please keep us updated on the progress of how you of how that goes. I mean, I think that I speak for Isaac as well when I say I, we're pretty fascinated by this and we would really love to see what it can do. Yeah. And when you have some music that cool. uses it, please please reach out to us so we can yeah. yes, hear indeed. it. Please. Yeah, it sounds. Yeah, I mean, there's I, a couple I'm, of videos of me playing it on Instagram. Oh yeah. But. Fun. Um, yeah, I have to uh, check those out. Yeah, we should do this again sometime. Yeah, we, I have to go to bed soon. I Can we do? You, you want you. to? It's you a fun rap? show, right? It's a fun yeah. show. I oh, I gotta go to bed. You guys can keep talking, but why don't we? Um, why don't we? Do you have anything that you want to shout out right now, though, Dylan? Like any projects, anything you want to promote? Um. Uh, well, I am putting out. Like you won't find anything on my SoundCloud right now, hmm. but in the next week i'm gonna put out a new single sick then i'm going to drop my new album Ooh. sometime probably early in august i love it where i'm not setting on a firm release date because i don't want to like miss it but yeah i think it'll be in august and i actually have two or three albums worth of stuff to drop wow but sick. the first album worth of stuff i think i'm gonna drop next month Okay. And then also Collection 2 for, for Friend Zone. It's going to be Ooh. a bunch of old stuff. Ooh, it's gonna have that's big. To Fashion Villa. Okay. It's going to be Collection 2. Wow, guys. That's, that's big. Fucking amazing. Friend Zone album. It's all going to be actual Friend Zone stuff, not just stuff I made by myself. Um, and that's coming this year. Amazing. It's going to come out on oh, vinyl. Yeah, oh, hell yeah, dude. No such thing as too much Friend Zone. Right. <clears throat> yeah, and um, yeah, I'm really excited about that too. But yeah, that's the, those are the big You're things right. that I'm doing. Uh, Isaac, do you have anything to shout out? Uh, just a few short things. Uh, I just wrapped just up a set. Your shout outs. I'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> just a, a couple short uh, things. I uh, I just finished a uh, set for my friend Manny, 
we were talking about them a little bit in the pre-roll. Uh, it's a down-tempo slash deep house set. Lots of Ground is Lava, lots of Holy Other, lots of Luzine. Uh, that's going to premiere. I really like Ground is Lava. Me uh, too. Holy Other is great, too. Me too. So, got a couple Ground is Lava yeah, cuts and Holy Green Other. What's up? I I used to know Ground is Lava. Oh, uh, I talked to him. This is named Jasper. Yeah, he seems like a really interesting guy. Their I whole see him label live. was pretty cool. Yeah, bro. So he so like I, on, he was like part of like Hudson Mohawks. Like, Hudson Mohawk. Yeah, Mohawk. Hudson Ryan Mohawk. Hemsworth awesome. did a lot of work with them. So the set yeah, starts off with Steel nice. Sky, the closing track from his third album, the really acid house heavy album, Frozen Throne, I think is what it was called. Uh, only person who's heard it is Lux, my partner. Um, so that's coming out. <laughs> Yay, Lux. We love Lux. Lux Lux gave it the um, the thumbs up. Um, so a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna come oh, out on Sight Sounds and Conversations. Don't know when. Uh, I I got I believe greenlit for the next Homesick Fest, the one that's happening around Halloween. I think we're gonna do like a dark synth vibe for that. Uh, and uh, news today, I'm actually going on. Yeah, bro, I'm going on DJ Non's um, event. This is embarrassing, but I'm blanking on what it's called. Virtual something. Um, oh, I some love of those DJ, vapor. I love, I love DJ Non too. I really enjoyed talking to him when we. Yeah, uh, he interviewed me when. I yeah, me him. too. Great interviewer, too, right? Yeah. So I'm doing. He's great. I love him. His show is great too. It's, I I'm so embarrassed that I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but um, I'm going to do 45 minutes of of just choice vaporwave cuts and some live commentary. Oh. July 31st, the very last day of July. Um, so tune in for that. Don't have any sort of like uh, URL or, or anything yet. In fact, I don't think it's been announced, but that's okay. That's it for me. Uh, on to you, because I know you got to go to bed. Okay. Um, so I have a song out on uh, the old streaming services right now called Work It Out. You can check that out. Uh, the Vapor Pop compilation is coming out. I have a song on that. You can check that out August 6th, right? Is it 6th or 8th when it comes out? It's definitely the first week of August, though, I believe. Right. There's a song on that. Um, uh, the big news, the big thing is obviously Terminally Chill uh, NorCal edition is coming back. So in Davis, California at Sophia's, you can check out my Twitter for that. Uh, it's going to be a big, big, big Vaporwave party that I throw. I do that in Philadelphia as well, obviously, but we haven't restarted the Philadelphia one yet, but the NorCal the one is starting up again. So if you're in the Bay Area or Northern California, come to Davis on August 30th because it will be myself and, of course, Fantacat and Frank Job C will be DJing that party, and it's going to be a riot. I want to go, bro. Chill, terminally chill parties fucking pop off. If you can come to them, come to them. You will not be disappointed. Like, I've been doing this for a while, Where and they're at? out. Well, I got one in Philadelphia. Well, I'm in Philly, so I have one at Philadelphia at the Barbary, and um, that ha would happen. Like, I would do that every other month there, but we haven't restarted those ones yet because they're refurbishing the Barbary, which is the club I do it at. But Sophia's in Davis, California, that one is, is just reopening. And uh, usually, and my, my, my dear friend and protege, uh, Fantacat, she usually runs that, manages that one for me. But I'm flying down to Davis. Solid flying, DJ right uh, across there. The, across the, yeah, she's wonderful. She's a hugely talented person. Oh, so absolutely. So I'm flying across to, um, to co-DJ with her. And Frank Job C is going to be our special guest. Can't wait for I all the energy so that we're going to bring for that. It's going to be amazing. And then, of course, the last thing I'll mention one more time, as I mentioned all the time, is Skeleton Lipstick. Glows the Melts Glows is the out melts, on baby. Needle Juice Mechards. There is, of course, the Melt variant and the Glow in the Dark Glow variant. But, you know, it's fun. It's gatefold. It's got inserts. That's and, sick. Yes, beautiful. on NeedleJuice.com. beautiful, dude. Oh, wait. Let me show you the vinyl. The vinyl is actually very beautiful. This is the vinyl splatter wow. for it. Wow. I know, right? How Yay. cute. This is the melt variant, the glow variant. It's glow in the dark, and it does work. Someone like posted their uh, the you know a a, a a picture of the glow in the dark one, and I wasn't sure if that was gonna work or not, but it, it does. It glows in the dark. I was like, fuck, that's amazing. That's cool. Thanks, man. All right, and that's good for me for now. Yeah, real quick question before we wrap up. Um, work it out. Is that the song that was on the Mister Nonsense comp? Mm -hmm. It I is, mastered. isn't it? I love that song. Uh, I remastered it and reworked it a little bit. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I mean, you've heard it back in the day, but I've just... I, I did hear it back it. in the day. I reworked it, I remastered it. It felt like it meant something to me right that's, now, so I... That, the things that that's mind. how you showed yeah, up on my radar, that song. So everybody, listen to Work It Out. It's solid. 
Yeah, I figured I have another song coming out after that called The Life You Wanted, but I've got to like work out the cover art for that first and then that'll probably be out later this month too. And then Sick. I don't know. The full another full length will be eventually. Maybe next month. I don't know. We'll see. No. I don't know. Vapor don't know. never sleeps, does it? Oh, that's out uh, too. Listen to that song. It's very fun. All right. I'm good. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, Dylan, yeah, thank you I, guys. Thank you so much for joining us thank on Hot Thank you so Takes. much, Dylan. Such a fun uh, conversation. Thank you. So fun. We appreciate All you right, joining us tonight. Again. Thank you, well, yeah, Chad, definitely, man. for being definitely. so active. Um, Thanks, we're going to let you guys go. I don't know who to raid, so I'm going to go ahead and shut her down. Join us two weeks from today. That's wow. going to be uh, August, the second day of August. Uh, surprise guest. Don't know who yet, we'll but I think out. you're going to like him. I think you're yeah, going to think so too. really be excited once you figure out who cool. we think it's going to be. So good night, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to follow right. us on Twitter, Facebook, Insta, and check out the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and um, Podbean. YouTube. YouTube as well, right? YouTube as well. Yeah, everything will be yeah. posted within within a day or two. Special thanks to Indy Advan for all of his help Thank with you, that. Andy. Good night, Andy. everybody. Thank you so much Good for night. the hot takes. Good night, Dylan. All right. Peace, guys. That's a hot take. Sweet around American flag, because that's what America's supposed to be. It's supposed to look like terminally chill. The insurance yeah. commercial has a fat ass, but like no personality. Yeah, I feel like sitting here and listening to this. <laughs> no, God damn it, Isaac, New Noise is not the first fucking refused album. Rip Isaac a new one today. Do you know what I mean? Like. Don't touch my records, ever. Oh, <laughs>